Hello and welcome sports fans to this live video streaming event from Table Rock Sports Productions in partnership with our local school districts and outstanding sponsors who make these presentations possible. I'm Jim McCoy. Joining me tonight will be Mark McLemore, as always. We'll also have special guest Joseph Brett, who is the ordinary play-by-play -play guy for St. Mary's on Table Rock Sports. And then, of course, on the camera will be Johnny McCoy. We thank you for joining us today. Welcome to the Lithia Superstore pregame show powered by Siskiyou Cellular in Southern Oregon and featuring the St. Mary's Crusaders versus the Cascade Christian Challengers. We're pleased to bring you this game on TableRockSports.net in partnership with the Grace Cascade School District and our sponsor, Business Partners. Joe Brett is the executive producer for this event. Our sponsors keep these events free for fans to enjoy. Please let them know you appreciate their support. Please help Table Rock Sports by subscribing to our YouTube channel, and thank you if you already have. We wanted to get on here just a little bit early to kind of give you an update on a couple of things that will be going on. Tonight is senior night for Cascade Christian as well as their homecoming, and we're intending to carry both of those events live this evening on Table Rock for memory purposes. Well, it, it, it's going to be fun to do that for sure. Uh, this is a special group of seniors. Um, we say that every year, but it seems like every year they are. But uh, this year, I, you know, for me, coaching most of them in basketball has been a joy, and uh, it's kind of hard for me to even believe they're seniors this year. Well, I know. I mean, it just seemed like yesterday your, your son, Joel, who yep. graduated five years ago, yeah. is, uh, was you know, out there on the court competing. And, and uh, now a lot of those guys, we had the 10-year reunion last weekend and saw some guys like Daniel Scotto that – it's like it really can't have couldn't have been that long since <laughs> they've been out. But anyway, we're going to cover some of that for you tonight. So a lot of pageantry here this evening. And Mark, you know, I kind of go back in time and memory. You can remember. You and I are both guys who grew up here locally and can remember a day when the St. Mary's Crusaders were a juggernaut back in the late 70s and early 80s under Larry Walker playing that old conservative smash mouth brand of football and I think they went through a stretch where they lost one game in yeah. about four years yeah, one two or three state titles in that in that span as well so they've had a lot of things going for them and the last several years part of their challenges they have as many guys out for soccer as they do for football but as they get ready to go ahead, we're going to turn it over to the public address. Don Sample on the mic this evening. And we'll probably talk over him a little bit, but, you know. Just, yeah. First, we would like to thank these student athletes for the dedication, commitment, hard work, and sacrifice made to our football program here at Cascade Christian. Over the last four years, these seniors have been part of a 30-program win. Three Far West League Championship, a victory in the 3A culminating week championship game during the spring of 2021, and the winners of the 2022 3A Oregon State Championship game. We would also like to thank the parents. Grace Cascade Christian Schools are honored that you have entrusted our coaches, teachers, staff and administrators to educate and disciple your sons in preparation for their future success. Now, athletes, as I call your name, please proceed towards the middle of the field with your parents. Our first senior of the evening is Christopher Fairley. Christopher's parents are Aaron and Eunora Fairley. They attend the story Ashland, in Ashland, the Story Church in Ashland. His hobbies are snowboarding and off-roading with Mason and Kellen. Favorite community activities, football team captain. Favorite experience, memory, slip and slide at North Bend team camp. After high school plans, attend Grand Canyon University. Christopher Fraley. And he'll also be a part of the homecoming court Our tonight. Senior is Mason Hoffman. Mason's parents, David and Nikki Hoffman, 
the 10 Church of Mountain Christian Fellowship. His hobbies are snowmobiling, snowboarding, wake surfing, golfing, and fishing. His favorite experience, memory, slip and slide at North Bend his senior year. After high school plans, attend Rope Community College to pursue a degree in fire science. Mason Hoffman. Our next senior is Kellen Flecker. Both parents are Rob and Pauline Flecker. Kellen and, and Mason are their cousins. Cousins, yes. I'm pretty sure that was right. But. And off roading with Chris and Mason. Community activities. He loves to volunteer with multiple middle school and elementary sports camps. Kellen's favorite experience memory. Coach Getman's halftime speech freshman year against Sandy Am Christian. After high school plans, Kellen plans to attend Grand Canyon University to pursue a degree in business. Kellen Flecker. Our next senior is Jack Nips. His parents are CJ and Angie Nips. He attends Mountain Church. His hobbies are sports and hanging out with friends. There are community activities. The referee for the Pop Warner Football League. Favorite experience, memory, winning state last year. After high school, he plans to attend college and play baseball. Jack Nips. Our next senior is Peyton Mauer. Peyton's parents are Marty and Brandy Mauer, sister Morgan and brother Austin. They attend Applegate Christian Fellowship. His hobbies are sports, camping, playing cards, and hanging out with friends. His favorite experience and memory, all in the St. Mary's games. After high school plans, he plans to attend college, just not sure where. Peyton Mauer. Our next senior is Luke Ryder. Luke's parents are Grant and Aaron Ryder. The church they attend is Edgewater. Luke's favorite hobbies are riding dirt bikes, fishing, snowboarding, football, and jet skiing. Luke's favorite experience slash memory, you guessed it, slip and slide at North Bend Camp. I've got to try that sometime. Luke's after high school plans are work for an excavation company. Luke Ryder. Our next senior is Brendan Van Wart. Brendan's parents are Skyler and Jenny Van Wart. They attend church at Edgewater. Brendan's hobbies are riding dirt bikes, fishing, and snowboarding. Favorite community activities, future farmers of America. Favorite experience, memory, slip and slide at the North Bend Camp. After high school plans, plans to become a helicopter pilot or full-time rancher. Brendan Van Hort. Our next senior, Dylan Westlake. Dylan's parents are Andrew and Michelle Westlake. He attends Zulai Church of the Nazarene. His hobbies are golfing, gaming, and hanging out with friends. Favorite experience slash memory, making a tackle in the state championship game and the slip and slide at North Bend Camp. After high school plans, attend a trade school to become a plumber. Dylan Westlake. Well, he'll be the fastest plumber the that anybody's ever known. That's for sure. Ashton Moody and Luke Wilson. Maybe that means he'll be quick getting the bill out. Moody, parents are Aaron Moody, Brian, and Ara Wilson. He goes to Church of New Life Nazarene. Ashton hobbies are sports, playing cards, hanging out with friends and family. His favorite community activities volunteer with multiple middle schools elementary sports camps. 
favorite experience, memory, winning state last year and celebrating with my brothers. After high school plans, Ashton plans to attend Grand Canyon University. Ashton Moody. <laughs> Senior Luke Wilson. Luke's parents are Travis and Michelle Lawton and Randy and Ara Wilson. Luke attends Grace Point Fellowship. His hobbies are fishing, playing the guitar, and riding dirt bikes. Favorite experience memory, Coach Getman's halftime speech, freshman year against San Ian Christian. After high school plan, join the United States. <laughs> that must States have been quite a speech. I'm going to have to ask Coach about that. Let's give an enormous hand to these seniors and their parents tonight. I'm going to dismiss the parents to go to the uh, North Bend Swivet Flight. <laughs> All right. Well, the uh, so the senior night festivities are done, and I'm going to go ahead and turn that crowd mic down a little bit. And uh, well, hey, <laughs> here we go. Three man booth tonight. Unique approach for Cascade Christian, and joining us just coming off a uh, volleyball match at RCC. A little bit of NWAC volleyball action, and, and uh, looks like Joseph Brett, that went down to the wire tonight. Yeah, um, RCC had a little bit of a slow start in their matchup with Clackamas. Um, I think 25-23 set one, Clackamas took it, and then RCC kind of woke up a little bit. They took three straight sets uh, from Clackamas, but not without a fight. Only one set did they kind of pull away and, and run away with it, but uh, yeah, it was a, it was a dog fight for him for sure. All right. Well, of course, you're or the week by week play by play guy known to St. Mary's fans, and uh, a lot of a lot of fun coming into this game. It's an old rivalry, and I know a lot of people will look at it and say, "Well, gosh, Cascade has taken about 22 out of 23 of these meetings, and the last one came, I think, about 2006." But uh, you know, I look at the other side of it. Cascade hasn't been able to crack the code in uh, girls' soccer, boys' soccer, generally speaking. And it's really kind of interesting how with St. Mary's uh, that uh, they're a little bit more maybe of a soccer school, have a little bit of that international flavor. But by the same token, and I'll let you speak to this, Joseph, is that, frankly, I think that this uh, St. Mary's team this year is better than a lot of people expected. Yeah, um, you know, uh, coming into the season, Coach, Pretty much in his uh, preseason interviews and anybody he, he spoke with, uh, the word coming back from Jamie was, you know, we just want to go out there and compete, have fun, and hopefully be in in a couple games, you know, come the end of the fourth quarter. And uh, they've definitely been able to do that. You know, they're, uh, what, four and three coming into tonight. And... Uh, They've, they've gone out there and fought every single game. They're a young group of kids. 11 out of 26 uh, roster spots are freshmen, freshman quarterback. And uh, I think only four seniors on the uh, team altogether. And most every kid's playing both sides of the football, uh, offensively, defensively, and on special teams. And, uh, you know, credit to them. They just have persevered through this season as young as they are. All right, and uh, I think here probably momentarily a rare opportunity we actually hear from a Cascade Christian band <clears throat> comprising of middle school students, high school students, some school staff, and alumni here this evening. So you want to make sure that we don't uh, miss out on that. So a lot of pageantry in, in, in this game, and here we go. We'll go ahead and uh, cut the mics down and bring the crowd mic up. of our national anthem. Good evening, would you stand and join me in prayer, please? Father, your provision for us is abundant and your mercy everlasting and far-reaching, and we are so grateful. Lord, thank you for the evening tonight. Thank you for each of the young men playing, all of their coaches, parents, everybody who's worked to make this evening possible. We thank you. 
We pray you'd watch over it all and bless us. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Please remain standing as we honor America, our servicemen and women, our veterans, and those who have given the ultimate sacrifice for the playing of our national anthem, featuring Cascade's own alumni student pep band under the direction <laughs> Yes, Jim. The band leader, yes. All right, our pep band performing the national anthem this evening. What we're going to do right now, we'll go ahead and take a quick timeout. This portion of our pregame show is brought to you by Bill's Glass, serving our community for almost 50 years for home, auto, and business. When you hear that crash, think Bill's Glass. We'll be back after these messages. are very curious about your new family member. Hello. We built her so we could get a family plan. Well, with U.S. Cellular, it's just $19.99 per line for one, two, or three lines. Oh. I guess we don't need a fourth line anymore. This is awkward. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Visit U.S. Cellular at Siskiyou, Southern Oregon's exclusive authorized agent for U.S. Cellular, now serving Roseburg and Klamath Falls. See SOUSCellular.com for details. Welcome to Gary H. Wheeler Field, part of the Lithian Driveway Field Complex. Jim McCoy along with Joseph Brett, Mark McLemore, Johnny McCoy on the camera this evening. And Mark, Joseph and I were talking a little bit earlier about the uh, this St. Mary's team almost being kind of like the little train that could. But, you know, I think that there were people that had their questions about the challengers coming into the season, and uh, they they've taken all comers, and now they sit on a 20-game winning streak. Yeah, pretty amazing what they've done over the last couple of years. And um, yeah, you look at St. Mary's though. Uh, you know, they won four games. You know, and and I think I think as as Joseph said, I think it's a surprise. I don't think a lot of te you know a lot of people picked them to win four games, and they've won four this year, and so they've been close. Don't get me wrong, it's a lot of close games, but they did they have won four games this year and that's been that's been stellar. I think I think even their coach would uh, would take that if you told them that at the beginning of the year that they were gonna win four games. So um, you know, to be four and three at this point in the season and, and really vying for a playoff spot. When you look at the at the league, they have an opportunity if they you know, especially no matter really what happens tonight, the team that's right you know, above them in the standings is Coquille and they have them next week. So they'll have an opportunity to play a Coquille team that, uh, you know, can uh, 
can um, you know maybe make or break their their opportunity to make the playoffs. So it'll be real interesting coming down to these last couple of games for them, just as much as for the Challengers. I mean, the Challengers win tonight. Technically, they secure you know the first spot in the league because they've beaten the only other team that has one loss. And uh, so, really, for them, a win tonight secures the league you know championship. So that's important for them to finish that. And then they get to go to South Umqua and, uh, you know, have an opportunity to play a, a team that's close to them, at least in the standings, and, and really get some OSAA ranking points is what they really are going to need going into that last week. Absolutely. Well, they're sorting out the coin toss at midfield. The challengers will move from left to right. The Crusaders right to left here in the first half. And... Uh, I think, Joseph, in terms of uh, the St. Mary's team, for those Challenger fans watching, what can we expect of them to, from them tonight? It looks like that uh, Coach Young uses something of a pro set. Who are some of the weapons to keep our eyes open for? Yeah, so you're going to be uh, seeing freshman quarterback Joel Keen uh, working out of the shotgun the entirety of the night. Uh, he'll have Indiana, a mix of Indiana Olsen as the, the single back in the backfield with him. Um, from time to time, you'll see uh, TJ Flowers jump in there and they'll work a two-back set. Um, but mainly, it'll just be Olsen. Um, you'll see Flowers going in motion a lot and trying to work him, uh, getting his feet moving. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a track star. He's got that speed, so they're going to do what they can to get the ball to him with his feet already moving. Um, and then from there, you know, we got a couple of guys, Bradley Patton and uh, another one, Tyler Archie, just starting to kind of show up here uh, towards the end of the year. He's a junior. Um, Horatska gets used. He's a freshman, but he he can be one of those guys you count on. Uh, plays a little bit of a wide receiver for him. And, uh, and then you've got a lot of these guys, like I mentioned earlier, they're playing both sides of the ball. Um, so you're going to see the same guys making plays on defense um, that I was just talking about. And uh, Rex Smith, he's, a, he's the big guy, going to be making the most of the tackles on the defensive line tonight alongside uh, uh, Matthew Impert um, and uh, Alex Rosales, number 51, on defense. The Crusaders will receive wearing their uh, visiting white uniforms with blue numerals. Back deep to receive will be T.J. Flowers. And I believe probably Bradley Patton back Bradley, there. Yeah, one of those St. Mary's uh, receivers getting set to kick it away for the challengers is Alex Fianaka, the sophomore, that we'll see starting at defensive end. After uh, we get the kickoff settled, we'll introduce the Crusaders offense for you. It looks like the challengers can't find the dang end tick kicking tee, Jim. Well, that could be a little bit of a problem. They're standing out there holding the, and having one of the kids, I think, is going to hold the football because they can't find the kicking tee. So uh, that's not a good way to start a football game. Not and and Jack is sitting there tee. saying, Jack Nipsey's saying, uh, don't kick me in the hands. Yeah, exactly. He's, I ho hopefully he doesn't pull the Lucy and, you know, <laughs> drag the ball out of the way. when they <laughs> Something, something to, might, might get shown tonight is I don't know about Cascades kicker, but St. Mary's has a kicker, number 12, Davis Jones. Uh-huh. And he uh, it. He, if he had to. And the game was on the line, down by three with two seconds to go. They'd line him up from 55. And it'll be Flowers with the return. He's just He's short of the 20-yard line, and that is where the line. Crusaders will set it up offensively. Let's go ahead and meet that starting lineup for Coach Jamie Young and company. Starting at quarterback will be Joel Keene. He'll be joined in the backfield by Indiana Olson. Your receivers are T.J. Flowers, Bradley Patton, Dom Horatska, and the tight end is Peter Kemmerling. The offensive line, Caldwell, Rosales, Burke, Dylan Van Horn, and Rex Smith. First down and 10 for St. Mary's. They'll have the ball at their own 20-yard line. It'll be Keene, the freshman, out of the shotgun set. Going in motion will be Flowers. He'll move into the backfield. And on first down, they'll give to Flowers. And he talked about how he could fly. But the Challengers do a good job of flying to the ball. 
defensively. And now let's go ahead and meet the uh, defensive alignment for Cascade Christian. The defensive line will be Alex Fianaka, Cole Breitler, and Sam Seitz. Linebackers Ashton Moody, Brendan Van Wart, and Mason Hoffman. The defensive backs, Nickel Set, Westlake, Mauer, Farmer, Wilson, and Kellen Klecker. Snap just a little bit high and right there in the backfield. Looks like Christopher Freilich, one of those seniors that was uh, recognized right before the game. And so the Crusaders find themselves in a third and long. Joseph, talk a little bit about the Crusader passing game. Do they have much of one? So they do. Keen, uh, a really strong arm for a freshman quarterback. One of the better arms that I've seen as a freshman in the last few years here in this uh, Far West Conference. Um, they're going to go deep, if anything, on a lot of their passing plays. Right there, TJ Flowers, if he can get that ball up and Flowers get his head around. Um, that's, that's his main target downfield. Uh, along with Indiana Olsen coming out of the backfield and shooting down the sideline. They'll take those shots. They're not afraid to. He's got a strong arm, um, and he doesn't make very many mistakes. Um, only a couple times this year has he has he really thrown it up when he really shouldn't be, be throwing it into coverage. But, Mark, I tell you what, uh, the secondary for the Challengers, that's, I think, one of their great strengths defensively. Yeah, well, certainly with Peyton Maurer and, uh, you know, Dylan Westlake and some of the speed they have back there. Uh, that is a strength for Cascade Christian. A line drive punt there to pick it up at midfield is Caleb Scaglione. Flowers tries to get a glove on him. He'll run up the sideline, spins out of a tackle, works toward the middle of the field. He'll cross the 15 to the 10 to the 5, finds the goal line. Touchdown, Challengers. Just like that, the Challengers are on the board with a 50-yard punt return for a touchdown. Okay, let's show you the replay on that. Didn't look like he had it at first, but Scaglione showing off that sprinter speed runs toward the end zone and punches it in. And just like that, the challengers are on the board. So Cascade Christian getting it done on special teams this evening. Yeah, not the greatest punt there from Davis Jones. But I think he did a good job of, of getting it on the ground and giving his, his guys, you know, some time to get down there. But, man, that speed of uh, Scaglione just, that's tough to catch. Well, I think that's going to be one of the real challenges for the, and any team that the challengers take on is that speed. But talk about a play on special teams, a block by the Crusaders. So with that, the challengers take the 6-0 lead on the punt return touchdown by Caleb Scaglione. We'll pause for messages, and when we return, we'll have more football action coming your way on TableRockSports.net. Glass covers the full spectrum of your glass needs and dreams. Having new windows installed by Bill's Glass dramatically update and improves the look of your home and helps reduce energy bills year-round. Let Bill's Glass show you what you've been missing. Bill's Glass, the largest glass company in Southern Oregon for your home and auto, as well as the trusted industry leader for over 50 years. Locally owned, family run, Bill's Glass in Ashland, Medford, and Grants Pass. This is Maya. As an embedded systems engineering student at Rogue Community College, Maya spends a lot of time in the lab learning circuit design and making great connections with her instructors and classmates. By riding the bus and not owning a car, Maya saves almost $1,000 a month. RVTD helps Maya get to and from class safely and easily, enabling her to invest in her bright future at Oregon. Fianaka kicking it away for the challengers, slips through the hands of Patton. Patton will take it in the end zone. And remember, in high school, you can't return the football out of the end zone. So it's an automatic touchback. Challengers will have the ball, at, or I mean the Crusaders will have the ball at the 20. So I think, Joseph, you know, early on in this ball game, this is where they get a little bit, those young guys especially, get a little bit of a test. How do you react to a situation where, you know, the team's already on the board in front of you and, you know, you try to regroup and try to level it up now? Yeah, they just got to step up and, and play their game and execute. You know, the St. Mary's team 
They've never laid down in any game that they've played. They've been beat down pretty good by a few teams, but they've never laid down. And, uh, you know, if they can do what they're supposed to, they can hang for, for a while against Cascade. So here the ball handed off to Flowers, Cascade Christian. And we see Brendan Van Wart there for Cascade Christian. Another one of those challenger seniors and also one of those guys that uh, we're going to see at halftime on the uh, homecoming court. So we got the we got the full meal deal going for you this evening as far as uh, high school sports pageantry goes. And you'll see you'll see quite a few of these guys, you know, uh, go down and start cramping. And uh, you'll notice them start getting tired. You know, they're playing both sides of the ball. Long pass downfield, had a good look on it. There on the fly, had his man beat was Bradley Patton, and I think it goes to show us. Well, you know, the Crusaders got a little bit of little bit of speed of their own, Mark, and maybe the Challengers dodging a bit of a bullet there. Yeah, the only reason that that ball was incomplete is the pressure that the Challengers got on the quarterback. He, he took a shot just as he released the football there, and he obviously threw it before he wanted to. So Klein uh, taking some, or Keen, excuse me, taking some some pressure already from the challengers uh, and when he, anytime he drops back to pass so far. Well, I'll let you talk a little bit after this next snap, snap about some of the pressure that you're seeing and some of the line play because I think that's going to be critical tonight. And one of the questions going into the season about the challengers, Freilich gets pressure on Keen to bring up fourth down, and it looks like, Mark, so far the uh, challengers winning the war in the trenches. Well, that time the Crusaders just had five guys in to, to block, and the challengers brought six guys um, on the blitz, and you just can't you can't pick everybody up with, in that situation, and coming free was Freilich, and he knew exactly what to do to the quarterback as soon as he got there. And, and Coach Sean loves to blitz. Oh, yes, he does. So it'll be Davis getting ready to kick it. And this time, a little bit less pressure. Gets away a good kick. That'll end up going out of bounds at about the 46-yard line. Now, that's where the challengers will go ahead and take over. And let's go ahead and introduce you to the challengers starting offense. Starting at quarterback will be the lefty, Ashton Moody, joined in the backfield by Scaglione. The receivers, Peyton Maurer, Luke Wilson, Dylan Westlake and Christopher Freilich along the line. Jack Nips, Cole Breitler, Sam Sice, Luke Ryder, and Mason Hoffman will introduce the defense for the Crusaders after this snap. Twins on either side. Wilson in motion to the left side. Hand to Scaglione. Scaglione keeps his feet. He crosses midfield and gets it down to the 49. Give him six yards on the carry. Good blocking by the challengers. Nice hole for Skaggs and some extra after contact. Just pushing Skaggs forward, gets six. So that defensive game. line for the Crusaders, Rex Smith, Jeremiah Burke, and Matthew Impert. The linebackers, Olsen, Rosales. Challengers wasting no time getting it going here. And so we'll go ahead and get it. Now Freilich off to the races. Freilich. And he's chased down, and we have a flag in late. Indiana Olsen with the... Touchdown saving tackle. Well, and they're going to call Peyton Maurer for an illegal block, which I was watching him all the way, and he was definitely had vi the defender had vision on him. So I don't, I don't understand this call. He blocked him above the waist. It's 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 a terrible call, basically. I don't know how else to say it. And the guy that threw the flag is 20 yards down the field from where the play happened when there's three more officials right in front of it. So mm -hmm. it's one of those plays that I hate to see from officiating crews when you're the guy that's way back in the middle of nowhere and you chuck a flag 30 yards and there's three officials right in the neighborhood of where the where you're throwing the flag for. So, yeah. Um, well, you know how it goes. Our vote doesn't, doesn't count. It doesn't count. So it'll be uh, second down and 10 for Cascade. Actually, it'll be a first and 10. So Get that reset for you. So now the challengers at the 40-yard line. Moody out of the gun. Short drop, quickly fires the pass to Maurer. Maurer, the leading receiver on the Challengers, coming in with 35 catches on the year, and he tied a school record with 10 receptions 
last week. And I think probably from a matchup standpoint, Joseph, he's probably going to be the biggest headache for the Crusaders. Yeah. Um, they've they've done a really good job this season of shutting down receivers um, on the defensive end of thing. It's been the running game that has really beat St. Mary's this season. And now a catch made behind the defense. Luke Wilson on the 31-yard Their backs and their, their cornerbacks have, uh, and safeties have done a good job of staying with uh, their receivers um, for the better, better part of the year. It's just that, that line and the penetration that other teams have been able to get against them that's uh, really cost them a couple of games. They, they could easily be 5-3, and three, maybe even 6-3. and three right now if they if they could shut down the running game sooner well I think what happens is, is yeah you have difficulty with stopping the run it sets up the pass nice pass play there of course Luke Wilson and Ashton Moody step brothers and you can kind of tell all that time the backyard has paid off Moody gonna go for two here has a man at the back of the end zone it's uh, and it, it is Christopher Fralick in the back of the end zone for the two-point conversion. So the Challengers now up 14. All right, 14 nothing ball game. We've got 8:09 left to go here in the first quarter of play. Busy night here at Gary H. Wheeler Field, and that's part of the Lithia Driveway Complex. And I uh, want to remind you that Table Rock Sports welcomes Solar Pros and owner Mason Mahaffey to our sponsorship team. Solar Pros can save you thousands on your home solar panels installation. Check out their Facebook page to learn more. Search Facebook Solar Pros PNW. Also, fans, it's time to get back into the game. As an official, there is a critical need in all sports right now. We've got winter sports coming up, so we've got basketball and wrestling and some other things coming up, and right now, they could sure use some help. Go to OSAA.org and click on the blue Become an Official button to learn more. And uh, Right now, the Challengers getting set to kick it away, leading 14-0 early in the ball game. Challengers sitting on a 20-game winning streak that dates back all the way to the end of the 2022 season with a playoff loss to Syuslav. So they're 13-0 last year, 7-0 this year, and they're looking good so far coming up on their schedule. We mentioned Coquille playing St. Mary's next week. Which makes this right here even more interesting to me when I look at it. Yes, it does. The so Lakeview at 4, losing to Cascade 35 nothing. Cascade sitting at 5 in the state. Of course, yeah. I think... Well, that, remember, the state rankings always have to do with who you've played. So, if you look at um, uh, Lakeview's schedule, they have played the better teams in our league. Remember, all the teams in our league play the same teams. So, once we play South Umqua next week, then that'll all work itself out. It's kind of weird how they do it, but that's 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 why it looks that way. It's a funky system. It, totally it a funky system. Yeah. I guess this is where I make my hey, boomer con comment. I think I liked it a little bit better when humans made the decision, but people didn't like that either. So there you go. Be careful what you ask for. And uh, Keith compl completes the pass, and they go to Flowers. And I got to imagine that's a combination okay. that you've seen all season long, Joseph. And uh, what I imagine would love to get that guy out in space. Yeah, I'd like to see him. Uh, find TJ downfield. That's been Keen's big connection. Him and uh, Olsen coming out of the backfield. And in the last few games, they've been starting to mix in some other guys too pretty reg regularly and uh, mixing it up a little bit. Olsen with the carry. And he's going to lumber his way out to about the 25-yard line. And I think wow. it looked like the there was a fumble. The ball was taken away from him. I think he took it straight out of his hands. So that would be Brendan Van Mort. Kind of reminds me of David Sellers several years ago against Gold Beach, and we'll show that play to you. It's just that big pile in the middle of the field, and out pops Van Mort, and quickly he goes in. So challengers making plays defensively. As they have all season. Remember, we, we talked about this before, but 
the, currently the challengers giving up the fewest amount of points in all of 3A this year. Um, you know, of any team in the whole 3A division, the challengers have given up fewer points uh, than anybody else this season. And that defense has been phenomenal. It's definitely been really the strength of the, of the team this year, I think. Well, and here uh, with that, not only did they get that, but you got the play on special teams with Scaglione's punt return. And then the offense with the play there and uh, the challengers, I think that's part of the problem. You got so many guys, you got to try to stop. Exactly. Hoffman kicks. The senior who's just been kicking a little over, well, a season and a third now. Tax on the extra point. We'll pause for messages and we'll return with more action here on TableRockSports.net. game day for a family get together Sherms has the quality products and prices that will make you cheer Sherms Thunderbird Market Medford's original discount grocery store Daily adventures this summer start at Pinnacle 365. Accelerate your day with morning motivation. Freshly ground, swiftly brewed. Add some extra crunch to your lunch with our mouth-watering crispy crunchy chicken. The perfect combination of crispy juicy chicken and irresistible flavors. Earn free rewards and save at least 16 cents a gallon with our Peak Rewards app. Get supercharged and add to your fuel savings. When you purchase Core Water, Nestle Ice Cream, and Red Bull, this summer, let's meet at the peak and save on our daily adventures. You want diverse venues? We got them. Year-round sports access? You bet. Race cars, soccer, paragliding? Check, check, check. Medford has it covered as your sport ground, where the West Coast plays. Fianaka kicking it away. Patton will take it just in front of the goal line. He'll run out across the... 20-yard line now to the 22 you've talked about. I know over the years it seems like, you know, Indiana Olsen's been around forever, and we've talked a lot about Flowers, but Patton might be one of those guys that maybe we don't hear the name quite as often, but he shows off his speed there. Yeah, Bradley Patton, just one of those kind of sneaky guys on the, the team. Um, and and about the third or fourth game, they, they moved him onto the uh, kick return and moved him in a few new places, and, and they've been utilizing him a little bit more and more, and he's been consistent. Empty backfield. Keen trying to run away with it, and uh, Mark, I believe that looked like that was Mason Hoffman running in on the tackle. Yeah, it looked like Mason Hoffman coming in from his outside middle linebacker uh, position and dropping him for a loss. Well, we talked about the progression, the evolution of Hoffman as a player, but he's really come into his own defensively this year. So far, St. Mary's struggling to do much of anything offensively with challengers in the backfield on every play. Keen throws the ball a little bit high, but Flowers with con a good concentration to make the catch and he'll get back some of that lost yardage as he is taken down at the 17 yard line. Yeah, give him four yards on the carry. Uh, Indiana Olsen there doing a good job of picking up the man coming in uh, applying the pressure to Keene. That was one of the first times that he's caught the guy coming in and given his quarterback enough time to get the ball off. Well, it just seems like the challengers are sending out waves of pressure this evening and Maybe uh, what you're talking about here is making some adjustments along the line. Arotska in motion. They'll go ahead and complete the pass to Olsen. He'll make the catch, get the ball up to about the 20-yard line, and that'll bring up about a fourth and 12. And i got to be thinking at this point that uh, Young will be looking to, to, to kick it away, given the field position and kind of the nature of the game so far. You don't want to give the challengers an easy field position. At this juncture of the ball game, given what the score is already. Yeah, nice job by the challengers of recognizing the screen, and I think that was Van Wert again making the play on that. I'll kick it away, and Scaglione trying to shake loose of Flowers, but nice. Flowers, good coverage on special teams. Great tackle by Flowers. Good job in the open field, keeping his feet set, but also keeping him, keeping him moving, not running through 
uh, Scaglione and just and attempting to make that tackle on the move. He he set set the feet, kept him moving, and he stayed in front of him. Breakdown position. Yeah. Yep. So the Challengers, pretty good field position at their own 48-yard line. They lead in the ball game, 21 to nothing. Scaglione looks like uh, he's in at quarterback. They're going to kind of maybe go. Well, I take that back because what's happening? I can see. Moody getting some last minute instructions from Coach Gatman. Because they're going to get a delay a game if they don't hustle. And the Challengers will take a timeout. 5.07 left to go in the first quarter of play. Cascade Christian leading in the ball game by a score of 21 to nothing. We'll pause for messages and we'll be back with more football on the other side of this break. So what do you do when a loved one has been wrongfully injured or killed? It's simple. Just go to LetUsFightForYou.com. That's it. LetUsFightForYou.com. Helping Oregonians get justice for over 40 years. Pick it up. Let's go. Come on. Defense. Defense. What am I teaching you at home? Has this kid played before? Shoot it. Oh. Ah. Come on, ref. Open your eyes. Can't you see out there? So, which one's your kid? The referee. You can be a parent, athlete, coach, or an official, but you can only be one. Know your role. So what do you do when you can't work because you were injured on the job? Easy. Just go to LetUsFightForYou.com. That's it. LetUsFightForYou.com. Helping Oregonians get justice for over 40 years. Cascade Christian, Moody getting some pressure, but throwing the ball downfield, and the catch is made. Christopher Freilich catches it, and the challengers are in the red zone. Spectacular play, good presence there. That's one thing about Moody I've really liked, Mark, is that he plays very well under pressure. He really does, and, and he gets rid of that football just at the last second. He holds it as long as he can, and he made a great throw that time. Freilich, a nice adjustment to the football as it was just a bit underthrown, but he's able to go up and get it and pick up a huge gain for the challengers. Trip receivers to the right side. Scaglione in the backfield. We got a, a lone man out to the left. I believe that is Dylan Westlake. He'll go in motion, and they'll do a little fly sweep action, but defensively, Keen, who's been on the receiving end of a few tackles tonight, I uh, see him making some uh, good plays there, Joseph, defensively. Yeah, he, he steps up on defense. He makes a lot of big tackles. And uh, just two weeks ago, here at this very same field, um, you know, he had the uh, interception return for a touchdown at the uh, three-yard line to uh, seal the game for him against Douglas. Scaglione taking the handoff, eludes Olsen. And he'll get it across the five-yard line. Looks like he about the three or four he'll be taken down at. Yeah, give him five yards on the carry and setting the challengers up now in third and about four. Well, we don't see this often, Mark, but it looks like we've got uh, Van Ward in at left tackle. <laughs> yeah, he, he's a kid that'll play just about anywhere you put him. Right, kind of a Swiss Army knife. They'll hand the ball, and actually taking the carry is Jack Nips. Yeah. And he gets down to really close to the first down marker. Maybe so just a bit short, bring up third and a half a yard. Actually, is that fourth down, Mark? Yep, uh, fourth, right, down. fourth down. Correct, fourth down. And very short. Well, that's interesting, of course, there. You know, we know sometimes uh, Coach Getman loves to throw the linemen a bone and let them get some carries. But now uh, it looks like I think he's got nips. He's still in there. So they'll hand to Jack. Jack has a path, but taking him down. And he does not T. get the, Flowers. He got the first down, so it's going to be St. Mary's ball. Well, you figure it's one of those low-risk kind of high-reward situations. If, if you don't make it, in which case he didn't, the St. Mary's gets the ball back, but they're going to be deep in their own territory. You know, St. Mary's may not have many things that are positive that come out of this game, but that's going to be one of them right there for him. A, a big fourth down stop, get the ball back. Give your team a little bit of an opportunity to, to try and do something. You know, It's going to be big big for these kids and, and their uh, morale down there. 
Well, and uh, you, you talk about so many freshmen on these teams. And I, I think a part of that process is you you know you take your lumps as an underclassman, but you battle through those things and you learn from them and grow, and and then hopefully you have some successes along the way. Right here, though, it's a safety. It's a safety. So the challengers making another play defensively. So you don't see many of those. I'm trying to think, Mark, maybe this is like the second one we've seen this year. Doesn't happen very often. But in this case, and this is probably a situation where at least in terms of points that uh, Cascade says, well, we didn't get the touchdown, but ultimately we did get two out of it. There you go. Now, this is not something, Mark, that happens very often, but now the result of this, it'll be now a uh, free, free kick by the Crusaders. From the 20. So, as a result of all of this, the Challengers do get the ball back. Now leading in the ball game, 23 to nothing. Did you see who got the uh, safety-producing touchdown? I, I uh, mean, safety-producing tackle, tackle? I, yeah. I did not catch that. A sea of black there in Mel It was. And uh, Joseph being the exception in this booth, but uh, but with the older eyes here, these black on dark, you know. And they're dark tough, on they're dark tough for me, tough. too. Yeah. But now the challengers, they'll uh, have back deep. Looks like they're going to have Luke Wilson back there along with Freilich and Caleb Scaglione. And... Now the... Why are they moving up to the 40? They're supposed to kick off from the 20. Hmm. Okay, I think this one official has finally figured that out. So they're going to go ahead and move it back. And so Davis <laughs> Jones... Well, I was perfectly content to kick it from there. Yeah. <laughs> it's all the way back to the 20, gentlemen. You keep going back. And like you said, it doesn't happen very often, so probably not a rule that many of them are familiar with. No. So that's why we're going backwards here. But the kickoff is from the 20, and we need the challenger uh, deep guys to move up a little bit. I don't think the ball's going to go quite that far. Davis Jones, a junior for the Crusaders, taking care of all the kicking chores. and Looks like he's just going to punt it. And yeah. again, uh, I would move up if I was the challengers, and it looks like they finally are going to move up a bit. Move well, up a little bit, but not too much with with his leg. He's he's got one of the strongest legs I've seen in uh, quite some time. Well, one of the nice things for him in this situation, he's not going to have all that pressure bearing down on him. No, nope. he'll be able to kick it freely. Yeah, he yeah. kicked one last week from, uh, I believe it was 43 at Brookings, and it was about 30 yards, 20 yards above the goalpost. Here, it taken by Scaglione. Scaglione finds the hole and he works it down to the 34 yard line of St. Mary's and that is where the challengers will take over offensively and it's been another one of those weird nights Mark where I'm sure when you, you total the stats up we're going to find that the challengers haven't run many offensive plays. So far only eight. Eight offensive plays so far. Um, Eleven for St. Mary's. And yet, and yet, look at the scoreboard. Yep. Kind of one of those odd deals. Moody with trips to the left. And now in motion, Wilson. Little swing pass out to Scaglione. He slips a tackler. Olsen there for the Crusaders. So it'll have about the effect of a handoff. In terms of yardage gained, about four yards on the pickup, bring up a second down and six. Four receivers set, three to the right side, inside slot Wilson, outside slot of Freilich. Now Scaglione, he's got open running room, open field there. Patton will bring him down at about the 15. Yeah, nice 17-yard run for Skaggs. And another first down for the Challengers. So that moves the ball down to the 14-yard line. 2 left to go in the first quarter of play. 
We got Maurer and Freilich to the right, Westlake and Wilson to the left, Scaglione in the backfield, man in motion, fly sweep, running and taking it to the house. Luke Wilson. Luke Wilson. Luke Wilson, touchdown, Justin Wilson. 15 yard touchdown for Wilson. And that speed that he can has is just uh, sometimes too much for for guys. They don't they don't expect him to be as fast as he is. Well, not a particularly big guy too, but there he takes it just around the edge and then takes it further outside and does a nice job of making quick cuts and ends up picking up the points for Cascade now as they lead 29-0 with 1.51 left to go in the first quarter. Moody the hold, Hoffman the kick, and it is no good. A little trouble there for Hoffman, but the Challengers come away with six. They lead in the ball game 29-0. We'll take a moment to recognize our sponsors, and when we return, we'll have more football coming your way on TableRockSports.net. Choose a company that best represents you and our local community. Choose a company that focuses on relationships rather than transactions. Choose a company that empowers their employees and provides growth opportunities from within. Choose a company that shows compassion and rises to the occasion in times of need. Call a John L. Scott broker today. Any time is a good time to plan your funeral, except at the time of the funeral. At Conger Morris, we know that there are so many advantages to planning ahead. It eases the burden on our families at their worst time. Pre-planning also alleviates their stress, knowing the funeral costs are already taken care of and it allows your service to be more meaningful with all of your wishes being taken care of. Call us today for personalized assistance in creating your own plan. Conger Morris, we'll always be there. Yeah, we'll have that to for we'll look forward to, both of us, next year. Back here at Gary Wheeler Field, Lithia Driveway Complex in Medford, Jim McCoy along with Joseph Brett, Mark McLemore, Johnny McCoy working the camera. Joseph joining us after catching some RCC women's volleyball as they pick up, I believe, their fifth or sixth victory in a row. There's Flowers with it on the uh, return, and uh, he slipped. He slipped and knee hit. Yeah, kind of a tough break there, and and, and unfortunately, it just kind of seems like one of those things. Once the uh, snowball gets rolling, it uh, it starts to get yeah, get kind of to tough. Stop, hard to stop it. That's one rule I would love to see change, though, at the high school level. Is if you go down, I, I think that it's football. Nobody's touched you. No, 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 Get up and be able to continue the play. Well, there you go. Kemmerling is a tight end, and Keene completes the pass. They're making the tackle for Cascade Christian. And on that stop there, that looks like that was Luke Wilson. Luke Wilson. Yep, Luke Wilson. But uh, nice uh, six-yard gain for the Crusaders. And that may just be the way it gets it done. I know uh, Joseph's campaigning maybe to uh, air it out a little bit, but uh, maybe that's how you get some of that started is because the ground oh. game isn't working. But Keen, though, that's the Got to throw, gotta throw that out of bounds. Yeah, you got to yeah. get rid of that yeah, you, ball. You got Dominic Karatska on the outside, so no matter where you throw it out of bounds, you know, you're not going to get called for grounding penalty. You got to get rid of that's That's the, you know, the youngster still trying to figure out the game. You know, maybe next year he starts throwing a few more of those away. But he also hasn't seen that much pressure dropping back this whole season, even in some of those tough losses to South Umqua and Lakeview. Um, on the offensive end, they were still able to, to, to do some things. Yeah. Well, I think, again, you're just talking about it. You have a freshman quarterback in there and, and, uh, yeah, you, lessons to be learned. It's a lot of teachable moments in that first-year quarterback at, at the high school level. Here, pass thrown just a little bit behind Pat. Coverage there. 
by Wilson again, I think. And a nice job of getting an arm in there and knocking it down. And remember at the high school level, too, a couple of years ago, they changed the rule that if you're outside the pocket, you can throw the ball out of bounds, and it's no penalty. So um, used to be a penalty for grounding if you did in high school. There was no receiver in the area, but they changed that rule a couple of years ago. And if you're outside the tackle boxes, um, which he clearly was, you can, all you have to do is get the ball past the line of scrimmage, and it's not grounding. So it's some of that is just knowing the rules, too. Jones will kick it. It'll bounce and take a Crusader roll all the way back to the 48. Scaglione sizing up the field, but uh, good coverage there by the Crusaders. In on the stop is Alex Rosales. Alex, 5'10", 185-pound sophomore. and You're going to be saying his name a lot over the next couple of years. I'll tell you what. Well, you're getting in on the play there. Only four seniors on this team, Joseph, and... Uh, uh, as you mentioned, a lion's share of freshmen here. And, you know, I just think about young teams like that, that th you know that one of the things I think that's been good for St. Mary's is continuity. That Coach Young has, uh, you know, kind of helped, well, essentially rebuilt this program, that they had to take some time off and play independent schedule to kind of rebuild. And, and uh, you, you know on a consistent basis what you can expect from your coach year in and year out. And he gets some time with these players. Right now, some pressure by the Crusaders. And Moody's going to have to try to get away. And his opposite, Keen there with the stop. So flag, flag down on the play. But second time, Rex Smith has, has got to the quarterback and not been able to make the tackle. He's, he's, he's got to gotta keep a hold of him back there. He's a tough one to, to bring down. But that... Uh, that one big play downfield, he, he got to him about seven yards behind the line of scrimmage and, and wasn't able to bring him down, and same thing here. So what are we looking at penalty-wise, Mark? I think it might be a face mask. I think she's trying to talk to the challengers right now. I think there was a face mask by uh, the... Let's see what they're doing here. They're trying to figure out what the call is. and looks like just a five-yard face mask. I guess. I didn't know that they had that in high school. But. Well, it seems like I faintly recall it. It seemed like that, that you know, you have some of those, well, let's the just put it this way. Hands to the face penalty. Yeah, yeah you know, you kind of you, you kind of know the difference. If you're the guy getting face masked, and, and it's the end of the first quarter, by the way, so we'll go ahead and uh, wrap it up right here, go to break, and then back with the second quarter. John L. Scott scoreboards. Cascade Christian 29, St. Mary's 0. We'll be back after these messages. Thanks for the ride. I'll see you after the game. Hey, um. Dear Katie, I've been your number one fan since I watched your first game all those years ago, and I still love watching you play. But I wanted to see you win so badly that my competitive nature got the best of me. I lost track of what's important. I thought I was supporting you, but I was really just embarrassing you. I'm not your coach and I'm not an official. I forgot my role. I'm your parent and you deserve better. From here on, I promise to keep my emotions under control. I'll cheer for you and all the other players, no matter the score, no matter the outcome. Thank you for sharing with me. Back to action. Joseph is by imagination. They give us a very quick timeout between quarters. I think they did. I think we got shorted some time here. We have to talk to, to get with the officials on those those media timeouts. Uh, Cascade with a run there by Scaglione. Picks up about 10 yards in the challenger first down. So the challengers having their way offensively, moving right to left here in the second quarter. Moody clapping his hands together or handing it off. It looks like uh, Fianaka there on the carry. Yep, Fianaka that, on that one. So the ex-soccer player picking up yardage. And this is his second year of football in the Challenger program. Doing well here. And once again, Fianaka with it. Works his way. 
makes some good cuts there and gets some good blocking upfield. Uh, Mark, as uh, the uh, challengers close in on picking yes. up six. 17 yards on the carry, and as you mentioned, a nice job of uh, running with the football. And we're going to get Jack Nips back in the game, still trying to get him a touchdown. <laughs> now, I'm trying to think. Luke Ryer got one of those this year. Mason Hoffman got one, I think, if I remember correctly. So they'll hand and this it. this time, he's going to get it. Jack Nips. Cascade Christian with the touchdown to make it 35 to nothing. So here you go. Here's your moment of fame, Mr. Nips. His twin sister, Claire. We'll see her at halftime as part of the Cascade Christian homecoming court. She's also a member of the Challenger volleyball team. They'll be in action for their league tournament tomorrow. And now the Challengers attempting the point after. And that'll be Mason Hoffman. 11 minutes to go in the half. <laughs> Hoffman looking like he was going to try to, well, throw it. and um, Another rule I don't like in high school football right there. Yep. <laughs> you don't get a chance to return it. Got to got to give them those points. That's that's points on the board. <laughs> well, it's like you know, it, yeah. So is that Horasco over there yeah. making that play? So the challengers denied on that before or after the game is a great time to visit Dutch Bros and enjoy your favorite beverage. When you stop to get your Dutch love, please tell them thanks for sponsoring these live athletic streams on Table Rock Sports and how convenient, Joseph, that we have them just across the highway. Well, we got them about every you know half mile around here, you know. <laughs> Twenty miles from the home of Dutch Bros and Grants Pass and you know. Oh, man. Everywhere you look, there's a Dutch Bros. Yeah, yeah. And it's starting to be like that across the country, too. You know, I, I read a lot of the uh, chat forums for Dutch Bros stock, and, you know, people post their pictures of new ones going up every single day all around the country. I think Texas, four, Oklahoma. 400 locations in the next couple of years that they want to uh, put up. And Started with a couple of guys with a little drive-up stand in Grants Pass. Couple of dairy farming boys. Yeah. And now we get the challengers getting set to kick it away. Alex Fianaka with it. And over end, down inside the 10. It'll be Patton taking it. He'll cross the 20 yard line out to the 22. Flag comes in on the play. I like they're, they're definitely keeping that kickoff away from TJ Flowers. Well, I think they're doing that on purpose. <laughs> yep, <laughs> At least I, that's what I'd be doing. Yep. See Zach Cook coming in. I know he's been dealing a little bit with the injury bug the last few weeks. Looks like he's getting set to check into the challenger lineup. Checking on the penalty here. You sure they aren't checking on who's buying pizza after the game? Yeah, it looks like a 10-yard penalty against St. Mary's. Not very clearly being um, signaled up to us as to what it is, but I'm guessing it was a holding. You know, we had, we had this same head official <coughs> uh, two weeks ago, and we're getting the call now, but I, I'd say about 50% of them, I did not see a call come at all. It was just assuming you knew what it was based on the yardage that they were marking it off. Well, I got to tell you, I, I have to give them credit because that is a thankless <laughs> job. <laughs> that it is. You know, it's not unlike being an offensive lineman. The only yeah. time your name gets called is when you get a penalty called on yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. And uh, not often enough that we tell them, hey, good call there. Keen. Going to throw, looking for Flowers. He can't hold on. TJ Flowers. Kind of a, got a little opening over there in the flat. Just couldn't come down with that ball. Nice looking throw from Keen. I, I do like what I see from the freshman. He he has good pocket presence. When he gets time to throw, he steps into it. He, makes, he throws a nice ball. Yeah, he's got a really strong arm. I've seen him 
uh, throw a few 50, 60 down the field and hit his mark right in the hands. Well, I tell you what, you don't have any time. Patrick Mahomes won't even look good. Right now, though, he completes the pass there. And Patton will pick up the first down for the Crusaders. You know, something I was thinking prior to this game today is I would really like to see Keen have the opportunity to get the ball out of his hand really fast. Mm -hmm. a, a bunch more slant routes, cutting across, bring the tight end into the picture. You know, St. Mary's does once or twice a game to bring the tight end into the picture. I'd like to see him have five or six opportunities, give Keen the chance to uh, step back and just let the ball come out of his hand. Well, I think as, as uh, he gets more used to that position and those kind of things, I imagine that's going to happen for him. And Keene completes another pass to Flowers. So uh, the Crusaders gaining a little bit of momentum here in the short passing game as the ball moves up to the 30-yard line. Winner, Andrew Getman. Andrew Getman, you've won a prize, so make your way down to the... Here, Andrew Getman, they're drawing prices for the alumni here this evening. I think if your name is Getman, you probably have a 1-5 in five chance of winning. <laughs> That's probably about right. Coach Getman, the eighth out of 16 kids. Wow. Yeah. And I think all of them went to Cascade. I think, you know, I think you at that point, you should probably get a gymnasium named after hey, you. Right? Right? Definitely. Right. John, you are also a winner. Pick up your waffle prize down at the camp. Pick up a one on the play. That'll bring up a third down and four. Keen dropping back, gets rid of it before the pressure comes, but it is picked off. There with the interception for Cascade Christian, that's Luke Wilson. Wilson down the sideline. And he scores. You know, that wasn't a bad pass by Keen. He just, uh, Luke Wilson just Wilson did a good job of jumping in front of that. He really did. Well, as a matter of fact, we'll show it for you right now. 35 yard interception return from Wilson. No, I was, you know, I think I was almost as surprised as Keen on that play. And I think the pressure coming, I don't know who that other defensive back was with uh, Wilson, but I think the pressure coming there kind of threw Flowers off just a little bit, and he didn't really get the hands out like he should have. And, and there it goes now. So the challengers extend their lead. Mason Hoffman. Getting ready to uh, attempt the point after. If we can get a good snap. We haven't had one of those for a while. Well, it has been a little tricky tonight, and I think well, that's that was another tough one. And so now Hoffman he says, "Well, what the heck? Well, let's just chuck this thing up." And he I completes it. I think that was designed all the way. <laughs> just like they drew it up, right? Although the snap, I don't believe, was designed to be behind the shoulder. Yeah. No, no. Well, I think that is where. I'll just bet you anything that not snapping that ball was Zach Cook, who is pretty reliable there. Sam Sice per pressed into that duty. Generally does a pretty good job there. But anyway, the result of all of it, they still get their two-point conversion. And we want to remind you that today's game is brought to you by Tap Rock Northwest Bar and Grill in Grants Pass, Elmer's Restaurants of Medford, and the Southern Oregon Sports Commission's Know Your Role campaign, promoting respectful behavior at youth sporting events. I'd also like to thank all of those who have come along and uh, joined us as YouTube subscribers. Say hello to our nearly 3,000 subscribers. Join the team at YouTube slash Table Rock Sports and get updates when games go live. For example, this afternoon, I'm just chilling out, minding my own business. And then as the RCC volleyball match you were covering went live, Joseph was like, oh, we got a match to watch. Let's see what's going on. And a little shout out to our uh our executive producer back on Aspen Street, the Ace Sports Radio for all you sports fans, has launched has launched as of 12 noon today, so 1300 a.m. and uh, 107.9 FM, and uh, some pretty interesting stuff as far as the sports world is concerned um, going on there. So new sports radio station just now launching today. 
Well, I imagine, in my understanding, part of the plan is is there will be a simulcast so that way people in transit can maybe catch the games on radio. Yep, uh, they'll be they'll be able to uh, eventually catch some some games on the radio and um, NFL games will be on there. Vizin, the uh, sports network out of uh, Vegas. So if you're interested in sports betting and stat statistics and lines, uh, they got like three hours nonstop. I listened to today um, all the odds and playmakers and um, yeah, some pretty cool. So it'll be some outdoor shows and good variety. And Joe Brett will have his own uh, local show going on the air before too long. Yeah, well, you know, on top of that, you know, you look at it between Joe and some of the uh, support that's coming in on that, you're going to make it a good thing. They've got some good backing behind it. All right, the Crusaders are going to try to take the edge of out here. 8.49, so there's still plenty of football to be played here in the second quarter. And until the uh, pick six by Luke Wilson, the... What's going on with the scoreboard? Is that right? We got a two-point conversion, right? So it should have been 43. Right. I'll, yeah. Anyway, just uh, pointing that out. We'll see what happens here. Yeah. Maybe when I go downstairs to do PA during halftime, find out what the story is. If I haven't had more points Actually, on the board by then. Yeah. Anyway. 35 and 8 is 43 last time I counted. Well, did you use uh, the new math? Well, maybe they didn't give us the two-point conversion for some reason. You mentioned the fact that they've, you know, there's been trouble trying to figure out uh, the signals from down below. But yeah, we'll see what happens there. Nonetheless, the pass falling incomplete for Keen as goes second down and ten. Yeah, some miscommunication there. I think they were trying to run the screen past the Flowers, and Flowers was headed downfield. So the lineup and try again. Flowers split out wide to the right. Slot on his side. Oh, he's normally the slot guy. His Haratska. And Mauer's over the top here. To see what they got Mauer over the top. So. And a pass to the left side. You're looking so at the flag? direction. Oh, of he's, got over, on he, the he's got it over there. <laughs> a, yeah, I think there's some pass interference going on here. It looked like a challenger got tied up with one of the receivers down the field. And I think that's going to be pass interference against Cascade Christian. And we really haven't seen, and I don't know what you've got on your totals there, Mark, but we haven't seen a ton of flags this, this evening. This would just be the third penalty of the night. For, I have for to St. Mary's plays a pretty clean football game as well, so they don't pick up too many themselves. They draw more penalties from other teams than, than anything else, especially on the offensive end of the ball. They've, they've got a pretty decent hard count that has uh, got them quite a few first downs this season. And that's going to be a 15-yard uh, penalty on the challengers and a first down for St. Mary's. So St. Mary's will now get the ball at their own 35-yard line. 8.30 to go in the half. Olsen in the backfield along with quarterback Keene. Over to the right side is uh, Haratska and Flowers now in that customary slot position. And then split out wide to the left is Patton. Ketterling lined up as a tight end. They'll go ahead and hand the ball off. And spinning out of a would-be tackle, picking up some tough, positive yards there is Indiana Olsen. Now he just kind of looks like he is the very definition of a power runner. I'm surprised Peyton Maurer, he, I think he saw that play coming the whole way because he was coming in hot, and he kind of just started to stutter step a little bit. I thought he was going to shoot in there and, and make that tackle, and good job by Olsen to be able to get by him. So it'll bring up a second down and short for the Crusaders, trying to look to get to some points on the board here in the second quarter. Ball spotted at their own 43-yard line. They got the tight end in tight, kind of almost a wing back type of spot. And then a three receiver set. Pressure coming. Keene has some stuff coming from the back side, from the blind side. Running in on it. Freilich there. Also looked like uh, we might have had Sam Sice in it as well. No, actually, that was Luke Ryder. 
So it'll bring up a third down and short. Challenger's going to go anticipating the run here. You can see all the guys in the box. Let's see if St. Mary's adjusts or if they just run, try to run the football. And no. they try to do an inside handoff. And well, and that's when if you're the quarterback, you've got to you got to get out of that. You can see there's too many guys the to block. And unfortunately, the, the Crusaders don't get out of it, and they lose a couple of yards there. And now that will bring up a fourth down and four. Uh, if you're going to go for it on fourth down from here, I think you take a shot on third down. Yeah. Especially with the stacked box the way Cascade had it. Yep, would have been a perfect time to take a shot. And you got but you got to get out of that play quickly and now they're going to are they going to go got for them it with here? the hard count. Are they going to go for it here? They're going to just take the penalty and punt the football. They're going to go for it. And the pass complete. First down for the Crusaders. So if we want to call this a gamble, it pays off as Patton comes down with the reception. Yeah, nice job. Good good pattern, just past the sticks, and he ends up making a nice catch. Good throw, and a first down for the Crusaders. You know, that's the thing, Joseph. You can look at the St. Mary's team, and you can see the potential in it. Oh, yeah, definitely. You, uh, Yeah, it's it's... It, it's kind of amazing to watch. Like, you see just so much potential, and it makes you really excited for the next few years down the road, especially as these freshman players keep playing together season after season. Well, First and there's ten. very few seniors on this team, too, so most of these guys are going to be back next year. Keen going to throw the pass, but that challenger pressure doing its thing and uh, making life rough for the freshman quarterback. That's one of those plays for Keen next year. He might get rid of that ball, you know, a tick sooner. And he has Olsen with some running room. He probably would have got down here close to about the 40 or 35-yard line on that play. Well, and a nice, a nice job. I think one of the challengers back in there, I think it might have been uh, Mason Hoffman getting a hand up and tipping that ball as well, making sure that path wasn't going to be completed. Because you're right, he had Indiana out there in the flat. Well, I think one of the things that's tough about these challengers, they're, they're not a, obviously not a very big team, but the, what they have done is they've mastered the art of being complete menaces defensively. And getting the ball away quickly there on the coverage, Kellen Klecker for uh, Cascade Christian. You see that the right idea is there. What you're talking about, Joseph, reminds me a lot of how uh, I think about the girls' soccer team at Cascade. And, again, it's kind of the opposite thing because St. Mary's has dominated that series over the years. But you can see this young group. It's like if you keep buying in, you put the work in, it's going to pay off. And they're not having a bad year. They just they have some tough losses, but they've got some wins littered in there as well. Third down and ten. Keen. Out of the gun. And once again, pressure coming. Just kind of unloads it. I think the man nearest it was... Uh, Rex Smith. Yeah, Rex said, no, I'm not touching it. Well, the problem is that one is going to be grounding because he's still in the pocket, and he tries to throw the football off yeah. to avoid a sack. So pretty sure that flag back there where it's dropped is going to be intentional grounding against, against St. Mary's. We'll see. If we the, line, get, the lineman Rex Smith, definitely not a receiver. No, definitely uh, no. not. So we're going to have intentional grounding here. Should be a loss of down as well. So it should be fourth down and now 20, uh, I think. So intentional grounding back. against St. Mary's. And I don't know what, where the football is only five yards back. Yeah, I thought it was a 10-yard penalty as well. But no, at this point, I guess that's fine. We'll, uh, they're going to punt the football anyway. It doesn't really matter, and uh, especially considering the score. Which Low snap. But Jones gets it away, puts a good boot on it. Scaglioni has some trouble on it. Man coming. Was the flowers. gunner there, Flowers, looked like he might have a possibility there for a moment. But... Uh, Challengers get it back. And they're going, you know, we haven't spent a whole lot of time on offense this evening. And, and uh, I get the feeling that uh, as far as big numbers go for the starters, 
we're probably not going to see. I'm uh, down the stretch. I think we'll start to see well, we guys just, like Grady Sickler and the Challengers have just run 15 plays in the first half offensively. Wow! Because of all the special teams and you know punt return touchdown, interception return touchdown, only 15 plays for Cascade. Short touchdown. fields as well. Moody Tunnel throws it. To so Peyton. Get some blocking, heads downfield, crosses the 40 to the 50. He's slowed down and... Uh, Good job by Archie to get there. You talked about Archie being one of those up-and-comers for the Crusaders. Yeah, he uh, he's a junior this year. Um, but, you know, there's been guys in his, in his way the last couple of years. He hasn't had many opportunities to showcase what he's got. And even this year, he's been... You know, they've been trying to really just work Flowers and Olsen and Patton, and um, now they brought Horatska and Archie into the mix as far as the, the offense is concerned. And you see him make some pretty good defensive plays as well. I'll hand the ball off. I believe that's Scaglione, and he quickly squirts through the opening and gets it inside the 20 down to the 17. Yeah, Horatska, he's a freshman. He's going to be one of those... Uh, to look out for in the next couple of years on this on this team. 22-yard run there for Skaggs and Challengers in business now inside the red zone. Caleb Scaglione, leading rusher on the team, coming into the game with 430 yards on the season, 9.8 per carry. Yeah, not a bad average, huh? Uh, I'd take it. First and 10 at the 16. Motion man is Wilson. Once again, they'll hand it off, and I believe that's Fianaka in there now. And he'll end up picking up a little over a yard on the play. You know, that's like the third time I've seen um, Rex Smith. If he can recognize the handoff um, and break towards the running back, he might have an opportunity to bring him down at the line of scrimmage. But... Uh, not quite recognizing it and just trying to chase down the quarterback without the ball. And talking about the quarterback with the ball, Ashton Moody scampers in for the score. 15 yard touchdown for Moody. Yeah, that was another one from Smith. He kind of got pulled on that fake handoff, didn't recognize it, and uh, just a little late and the quarterback able to slip past him. See the motion man, Moody, and you can just tell by that first step times, it's like he's going to go. And uh, he ends up running at home, and and I think for those Crusader fans and for you, Joseph, if the, if the challengers have a power runner, it's Moody. Yeah. Kind of undoes that whole uh, notion of the, uh, of the uh, diva quarterback. So I'm going to say that that two-point conversion was no good and go back to the 41, I guess, because okay. they're not changing that. We will take it off the board then and see if we can't get an explanation later. But the kick by Hoffman is good. John L. Scott scoreboard showing the Challengers 48, Crusaders nothing. We will pause for a 60-second timeout, and we'll be right back. It takes meticulous planning. Continuous monitoring. And forward thinking to deliver the perfect three egg omelet. Enjoy the patio weather and a brand new menu at Tap Rock Northwest Grill, where friends and family gather and memories are made. Come visit us today or visit our website. Cascade alumni, Zach Fralick winning a prize this evening as they do drawings for the fans. It reminds me to give a shout out to Mark Fralick watching down along the way in Veradale, Washington. Part of the reason why we do what we do, that uh, there's a lot of family out of town watching the games and Mark dropping Joe Brett a line and letting him know he appreciates the coverage. 
And Mark, we're glad to have you down along the line along the network and appreciate the kind words. Flowers takes the kick at the eight yard line. He'll be stopped just short of the 20-yard line. And that is where the Crusaders will take over. 4.08 left to go in the first half of play. Coming up at halftime, it'll be homecoming, and we're going to go ahead and carry that live. I'll end up switching hats to the public address position for a little bit. So it's like, I, I'm beginning to wonder, Mark, it's like, okay, winners tonight, Fralick, Getman, <laughs> Scaglione. I heard of Jacob Haley, too. Oh, there's a guy, yeah, one of our graduates from last year. We played basketball for you for yes, a little bit, did. didn't he? Balls fumbled, picked up. Um, <laughs> right one right the there, just, I'd like to see him take off through that hole. <laughs> Evan Stonehill ends up with the football after it gets no, kind of but another thing out of the hands of the quarterback. Another thing with the uh, with Keen being so young, he stays in that pocket so long. He's got to pick up and recognize the pressure coming, and also recognize when there's a little bit of a hole to step up into. And and even if you only get five yards, it's positive. Well, I we I know Mark, you and I've talked a lot about about you know the, the big thing for a quarterback. More than the big arm or the running speed is decision making. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially in an offense like uh, the Crusaders and the Challengers run, which is more of a spread offense, um, you have to be able to find the du the guy that's open. Um, and in some cases, it's yourself, like you said, Joseph, to just take off and run. But uh, you have to be able to find that guy, and if you can uh, find the right guy, usually that's when the offense is successful. And if you hold on to the ball too long or you can't make the right decision, then, um, you know, it becomes a huge problem. So there's some discussion going on down there because the ball ended up in a lineman's hands. And I don't – if it was a fumble, then it's legal. I if think they he were threw the ball. If they were considering it a pass, then it's illegal to for the lineman. It's illegal touching. And so I think they're now considering it a fumble because they didn't throw a flag. And, I wonder uh, if they're just giving it to him. Well, I, 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 I thought he threw the ball. Well, it, it was his arm going forward, or did the, you know, did the ball come? I don't know. It was really close, I think. So I think they just decided it was, uh, you know, not going to be uh, a fumble, or was going to be a fumble, and then they cannot throw the flag for illegal touching. So looking for Keaton, looking for Patton on the play. Pass falls incomplete to bring up a third down and ten. And that challenger defense has been great again tonight. St. Mary's unofficially minus 18 yards rushing and just 44 yards passing in the first half. So a nice job by the challengers defense as we've seen week in and week out so far. And uh, So far no one really had an answer for a lot of the pressure that Coach... Uh, puts on a lot of the different blitz packages and uh, have been very, very good for the Challenger defense so far. Keen looking downfield. Pass thrown in the direction of Patton. And Keen's down. Uh, to homecoming court. Homecoming court. court please report to the so with Keen down, let's go ahead and take a quick no, no, 30. It's Rick Smith. That's actually one of the linemen, yeah. So with the uh, Crusader player down. Let's go ahead and take a quick break and we'll be right back. My name is Mason Mahaffey. I'm the Solar Pros Manager of Oregon and I'm also a teacher and a coach here in the Rogue Valley. Have you looked into solar panels and it didn't make financial sense? I brought Solar Pros here to Oregon to make it more affordable for working class families to put solar on their home. Solar Pros is purposely beating our competitors' prices by thousands of dollars because we are that serious about saving you money. Solar Pros PNW provides the most comfortable, educational, and personal solar experience in Oregon. Visit our Facebook page at Solar Pros PNW to see all of our projects and all the families that we are helping save money. She broke a tibia. I forgot, I, I didn't get a chance to ask Jamie, but we had a, we had a player leaving an ambulance last week. Ooh. His arm and shoulder or something. Back here, we have an injured Crusader down, and Joseph, I think you identified it as one of the uh, Crusader <laughs> linemen. Smith. So, a, Smith. A very critical part of this uh, 
team, both on offense and defense on the line. Big dude. And uh, like you say, you you know, another one of those guys. Yeah, six, 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 240. So, Very football and baseball player for St. Mary's. So, I'll bring up a fourth and long for St. Mary's with 236 to go in the half. Jones getting ready to kick it away. And Scaglione back to receive. And he has been a dangerous one tonight. He certainly has. Scaglione will take it about midfield. <laughs> that was an awkward catch. And he'll go ahead and take it to the left side. Crosses the 30 down to the 20. Has some blocking. And will he break it? Will he, he enter the, the end And he does. Well, wait a minute. Wait. They're still trying to figure it out. Touchdown. It's a touchdown. touchdown. 55 yards on the punt return touchdown. Challengers right back on the board. So we really didn't get much of that. I had a, the replay kind of, time, kind of tight and was waiting to see is it a touchdown or not. And That's all right. Well, the moment passed. I have to say, whoever his lead blocker was down there about the five, ten yard line. He did a really good job of not picking up the penalty because his man kind of turned uh, upfield trying to make the tackle and could have easily kept kept making that block and got the block in the back call. And uh, he, he, he let go of him and just let Scaglione kind of do his own thing and he put the hand out and got him out of the way on his own. So they're going to go ahead and uh, try the two-point conversion. It's not going to happen. And I believe they were trying to get Hoffman there. Didn't materialize. So with 2.12 left to go on the half, John L. Scott scoreboard showing the Challengers 54. The Crusaders nothing will be back after these messages. takes meticulous planning. Continuous monitoring. And forward thinking to deliver the perfect three egg omelet. Enjoy the patio weather and a brand new menu at Tap Rock Northwest Grill, where friends and family gather and memories are made. Come visit us today or visit our website. Fianaka getting set to kick it for Cascade Christian. Patton and Flowers back deep. And he pretty consistently puts it just inside the 10-yard line. Patton with it here. He'll take it out past the 20, up to about the 26-yard line, giving the Crusaders some pretty decent field position here with 2.05 left to go in the half. Working on getting ready here for the homecoming festivities at halftime. That'll be coming up, and we'll be carrying that live on TableRockSports.net. Challenger defense so far really been the story of the game. St. Mary's just has three first downs so far in this one, and um, 
And that challenger defense has been very difficult for St. Mary's to navigate so far. Well, and to be fair, they've been difficult for everybody this year. Absolutely. Like, like I mentioned, giving up the fewest points of any team in the state. Freilich with pressure, pass complete. Klecker almost had the tackle, but Patton eludes it. He'll get out across the 35, up to the 38, where Maurer makes the stop. Uh, if it wasn't for Maurer, he would he'd be down either at the 30 or the end zone. Yeah, Klecker had him and let him get away, and 12-yard gain and a first down for the Crusaders. Those are the kind of tackles when you're a corner you got to make, and uh, Klecker not able to get that one done. That'll be first down and 10 for the Crusaders at the their own 39-yard line. 140 left to go in the half. And Keene flowers in the slot. He's going to go ahead and go in motion to the left side. Keene dropping back, looks over the middle, almost picked off by Van Ward. Yeah, I didn't see Van Wart obviously there as they try to throw one over the middle and Van Wart right in the passing lane. And uh, Keene kind of got lucky in that in that case right there. Well, the problem for Keene is he doesn't have any time. You yeah. Know? yeah, he doesn't. And even as he's throwing that one, there's a couple of challengers in his face. So, You know one thing I'd like to know? What time does Cascade start their practice? <laughs> uh, every every night, you know, I, I come down here and play softball at the fields. And last night, I'm driving through at eight o'clock, like usual, and they're still out there practicing away. Huh? You know, I think they're supposed to go like four to six, but here, long pass downfield, looking for Patton. And luckily for the challengers, he didn't. Again, Keen didn't have enough time to to set his feet and throw a good ball because he was open. Patton was open down the field. And these these guys, you know, I, I see it. They put in the work. They put in the time to to be as good as they are. Well, you know, you talk about that. There's the early bird weights, and then there's, you know, the training that they do in the summer. You kind of know when you get into this. I know that with some sports, it's like, yeah, you know, that looks like, like, say, I'll pick on the golf team. You know, it's like, yeah, that sounds like fun. Why not? You know, or maybe bowling or something. And. And you go out, but with these guys, you kind of know it's going to be a next-level commitment. Uh, and I, I think, uh, in a lot of ways, you say this, see the same well, thing with basketball or volleyball. Yeah, well, and a lot of it has to do with the guy, the kids that are there that encourage the kids coming up. So it's it's a program that's been developed over time, you know, and uh, and it's become sort of a tradition thing. As you see, you know, the Challengers lost what. 12 seniors last year off the team mm -hmm. that won a state title and again you know it's just it's reload yeah you know, and you and and that's because of the way that getman's built the program you see the cast on the hand there of Derek farmer who's playing defensively for the challengers it's interesting to think okay. that at the beginning of this year they're talking about the possibility of him maybe sharing the quarterback duties with moody yeah and he's played linebacker all season and moody's just done a fabulous job playing quarterback as well as linebacker. And he, with anything, with all the playmaking ability Moody has a linebacker, he's kind of become overshadowed by the accomplishments of Hoffman and Van Ward. Jones going to kick it away. Nice kick. Nice high kick. Allows the coverage to get downfield. And Scaglione slips the tackler. Gets out gonna, to they're going to call a hold right here on the at the 45. Right you are. Right there you can see it. And uh, so this one coming back a little bit with uh, just inside a minute to go. You must have saw something there I didn't see because I, I was I don't I don't know if I saw the penalty. No. <laughs> I thought I saw a pretty good little block there. It looked like a pretty good block, but I think I think there I think what I, I saw was a little bit of jersey when uh, the block was released and usually if you see that um, and you're an official it's kind of automatic. So a 10-yard penalty on the challenger. Just their second of the game. So that'll put the ball at the 35-yard line. Challengers with 58 seconds left to go here. Wouldn't expect them to be too aggressive, but we'll see what happens. No, you wouldn't think at this point. Looks like it's Moody's going to take a knee. At least he was headed for the center, and that's pretty unusual. Yeah. Yeah, you don't see him under center very much.
And so Moody will take a knee right there. And then you know, oh, they'll have to just uh, probably take one more, I would think. They're going to set the ball. And let's see when the official blows the whistle. As long as it's under 40 seconds, then uh, it's set for play. It should be good. They can take one more knee, and that will end the first half. Marty Maurer, the offensive coordinator for the Challengers, although the play calls ultimately end up being made by Coach Gatman. And I think we're right there at about the end of the quarter. We're coming up on halftime. We invite you to stick around for the Medford Parks and Recreation Halftime Show. Part of our special coverage tonight will include the presentation of the homecoming court and the announcement of the homecoming king and queen. That'll be coming up and then we'll also look at highlights and statistics from the first half. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to take this thing to break. And then we'll be back with halftime coverage here on TableRockSports.net. Keep it right here. Thanks for the ride. I'll see you after the game. Hey, um, dear Katie, I've been your number one fan since I watched your first game all those years ago, and I still love watching you play but I wanted to see you win so badly that my competitive nature got the best of me. I lost track of what's important. I thought I was supporting you, but I was really just embarrassing you. I'm not your coach and I'm not an official. I forgot my role. I'm your parent and you deserve better. From here on, I promise to keep my emotions under control. I'll cheer for you and all the other players, no matter the score, no matter the outcome. Thank you for sharing with me how I can do a better job of supporting you, your team, your coaches, and the sports you love. Still your number one fan. Love, Dad. Choose a company that best represents you and our local community. Choose a company that focuses on relationships rather than transactions. Choose a company that empowers their employees and provides growth opportunities from within. Choose a company that shows compassion and rises to the occasion in times of need. Call a John L. Scott broker today. Any time is a good time to plan your funeral, except at the time of the funeral. At Conger Morris, we know that there are so many advantages to planning ahead. It eases the burden on our families at their worst time. Pre-planning also alleviates their stress, knowing the funeral costs are already taken care of. And it allows your service to be more meaningful, with all of your wishes being taken care of. Call us today for personalized assistance in creating your own plan. Conger Morris, we'll always be there. Diverse venues, we got them. Year-round sports access, you bet. Race cars, soccer, paragliding, check, check, check. Medford has it covered as your sport ground, where the West Coast plays. Okay, you know how people complain about how Dutch Bros workers are like, too nice, too hyper, compliment you too much, whatever. Maybe you're not nice enough. Maybe you need to get a little Dutch Bros in here. Discover the West Coast destination for those seeking more. More sunny days, more athletic facilities, more outdoor adventures, more to do during downtime. Medford is your sport ground, where the West Coast plays. Actually, are they gonna start right now? They're gonna start right now, so you can just, just go right to the crowd, Mike. And we'll do the summary when they get back. We welcome you back. It's the Medford Parks and Rec halftime show. But we are going to give way to the Cascade Christian uh, homecoming night. 
events going on on the field. They're going to crown their king and queen and bring everybody out. We're going to cut to the field, Mike, and uh, let everyone enjoy the festivities for a little bit. And then we will be back with some halftime stats uh, here on Table Rock Sports. Um, homecoming night for Cascade Christian. We're going to cut to the crowd mic and we'll be back in just a little bit. Welcome to Cascade Christian's 2023 Homecoming. Our homecoming board has been chosen by the classmates and we present them to you now. Our first seniors are Claire Nips and Peyton Mauer. Claire is the daughter of CJ and Angie oh, Nips. She lives in Eagle Point and a close family church. No, he's got, a, he's got a leg, doesn't he? Southern Oregon Humane Society and serving on the ASPG at school. She has competed for four years wow, in volleyball at Cascade. Claire's hobbies include going to concerts, dog sitting, and hanging out with friends. After high school, she plans to attend college and major in business. Someday, Claire hopes to travel to Australia and pet a kangaroo. Claire Nick. Peyton is the son of Marty and Brandy Mauer. He lives in Medford and attends Applegate Christian Fellowship. His activities have included volunteering at Kids Unlimited and Volleyball. Peyton has competed for four years in football and basketball and two in press. His hobbies include camping, playing with his dog, hanging out with his friends. A fun fact about Peyton is he has never had Starbucks before. After high school, he plans to attend college and hasn't yet made a decision on where. Peyton Mauer. Next are Brooke Aiken and Blake Chamberlain. Brooke is the daughter of Tyler and Jennifer Aiken. She lives in Central Point and attends Eagle Point Community Bible Church. Brooke has done fundraising for Hearts of the Mission at St. Jude's and is also a member of the St. Jude's Leadership Society. Brooke has played basketball all through high school, is a member of the crap shooting team, and this spring will be her second of competing in high school track and field. A fun fact about Brooke is that she has a cat named Boomer. After high school, she plans to attend George Fox University, where she plans to earn a nursing degree and work in psychiatric nursing. Brooke Atkins. Blake is the son of Chris and Erica Chamberlain, and they live in Eagle Point. He attends Eagle Point Community Bible Church. Blake has performed service at church, has a job, and he's flown aircraft as well. After high school, he plans to enter commercial flight trains. At Cascade, Blake has been a member of the trap shooting team for all four years of high school. A fun fact about Blake is that he owns, by his words, a small cremation company. Blake Chamberlain. Next are Grace Ann Murphy and Christopher Fraler. Grace Ann is the daughter of Luke and Rebecca Murphy, and they live in Eagle Point. She attends Eagle Point Community Bible Church. Grace Ann's activities have included serving as ASB Vice President, as well as the Edgewater Leadership Team, Mexico Mission Trip, and working as a kids camp counselor. A fun fact about Grace Ann is she once won $100 in a pickleball tournament, and she loves practices. Among her favorite activities are rodeo, trap shooting, basketball, skiing, and snowboarding, white surfing, traveling, and hanging out with friends. After high school, Grace Ann plans to attend Baylor University to study entrepreneurial business. Grace Ann Murphy. Christopher is the son of Aaron and Eunora Fraley. They live in Grants Pass and attend the story in Ashland. Christopher's activities include being a captain of the football team. His hobbies include hitting the off-road with Mace Hawk and Truck Man. While attending Cascade Christian, Christopher has played four seasons of football. A fun fact about him is he likes riding on the slopes with his girlfriend and his homies. After high school, his plans, his plans include Grand Canyon University and Chick-fil-A. Christopher Fraley. 
Next are Maddie Todd and Zachary Northrup. Maddie is the daughter of Mike and Donnell Todd. They live in Medford and attend Jacksonville Presbyterian. At Cascade Christian, Maddie has competed in volleyball for four years. Her interests include hanging out with friends, coaching volleyball, and traveling to football and basketball games. Maddie's activities have included serving on the ASB team, doing DDS at her church, and playing club volleyball. A fun fact about her is she has never broken a bone, but she's broken her mom's thumb. After high school, Maddie plans to attend Biola University and pursue a law degree. Zachary's the son of Mark and Tommy Northrup of Central Point. He and his family attend Hope Presbyterian in Mill River. Zachary's activities include working on his continental and playing computer games with his friends. He's worked at food for us for a year and a half. While attending Cascade, Zach has played two seasons of football and he's been a member of the crap shooting team throughout high school. A fun fact about Zachary, he's an isotope for Matt. After high school, he plans to get a one or two year certificate or go straight to the workforce, Zachary Northrup. Next are Molly Griffin and Kellen Clucker. Molly is the daughter of Jeremiah and Becky Griffin of Medford. She attends Applegate Christian Fellowship. Her activities include volunteering for Cascade Christian events like the golf tournament, auction, and other marketing at school. She's also volunteered with Hearts for the Mission. Molly has played volleyball at Cascade all throughout high school in the center of the year last season. She's also played club volleyball for six years, traveling to places like Salt Lake City and Las Vegas. She loves her dog, Samson, like painting, drawing, watching movies, traveling, hanging out with friends, and sleeping. A fun fact about Molly is that she was with a group that snuck churros on the Guardians of the Galaxy ride in Disneyland, and eating the churros got taken out of the picture by Disneyland. They call it the Churro Chomp. After high school, Molly plans to attend Biola University to major in film and automation in animation. Molly Griffin. Helen is the son of Rob and Carlene Clacker. They live in Medford and attend Mountain Church. His activities include helping with Mr. Shea's PE class. In high school, Helen played football and basketball all throughout high school. He likes hitting the slopes with Christopher and going off-roading with Mason and Christopher. After high school, Helen intends to attend Grand Canyon University. Helen Clacker. Our last two seniors are Holly Bergen and Brendan Van Boer. Hallie is the daughter of Todd and Melissa Bergen of Eagle Point. They attend Carroll Christian Fellowship. Hallie has been involved in rodeo in the Oregon High School Rodeo Association. She enjoys training and riding horses and hanging out with friends. After high school, Hallie plans to attend Cosmetology School. Hallie Bergen. Brandon is the son of Skyler and Jim Van Boer. He lives in Medford and attends Edgewater Christian Fellowship. Brandon is involved in FFA. He played football all four years at CCHS and baseball for two years. Brendan enjoys snowboarding, racing motocross, and playing football. A fun fact about Brendan is he has two siblings, a brother and a sister. After high school, he is interested in either becoming a helicopter pilot or a rancher. Brendan Van Horn. And now, the Cascade Christian High School homecoming team and queen are Grace Ann Murphy and Zachary Northrup. So the king and queen here on homecoming night have been crowned. It's Grace Ann Murphy and Zachary Northrop, or North Northrop. Northrop. There you go. That'll be your Cascade Christian king and queen for 2023. So we got some uh, first half stats here. Um, it's pretty much been all Cascade. Not a whole lot from the Crusaders through the uh, first 16 really. minutes, but. I'll turn it over, and uh, we'll see what we got. Yeah, well, in the first half, uh, 
St. Mary's, let's start with their statistics first. Uh, they had four first downs. Uh, they ran the ball 10 times, but for a minus 18 yards, quite a few sacks and pressures by the challengers. Passing, um, Keen, eight for 24 for 56 yards. Um, so between rushing and passing the Crusaders, 38 yards of offense. They also had 95 return yards. So for a total of 133 yards of total offense in the first half for St. Mary's. Penalties, St. Mary's two penalties for 15 yards. Um, Keen also with that one interception in the first half. For the Challengers, uh, not a lot of not a lot of statistics for them really either. Only eight first downs scored, a, you know, on special teams scored on interception returns and and a punt returns. So just eight first downs in the cha- in the ch- for the Challengers. They did ran, run the ball 14 times for 147 yards. Uh, obviously a little over 10 yards of carry for the Challengers. Passing um, five for five on the night. Moody is so far. For 131 yards. So running and passing for the Challengers, 278 yards of offense in the first half. Um, return yards, the Challengers 155 yards in returns, two putt return touchdowns in the first half, and uh, total offense for Cascade Christian in the half, 433 yards. Penalties for the Challengers, two penalties for 25 yards, and uh, the Challengers did have one turnover on downs, and there was also a safety recorded by the challenger defense against the crusaders so that's that's it for the first half a really nice job of the challengers defense again of kind of controlling the line of scrimmage and not allowing uh, you know saint mary's to do much uh as i mentioned just 38 yards of offense in the first half all right well mark and joseph thank you for uh covering things while i was downstairs and uh congratulations to the homecoming court i think what we'll do right now is we'll go ahead and take a quick time out and when we return We'll uh, start getting ready for the start of the second half. The halftime show brought to you by Medford Parks and Recreation. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. And don't blink because this one will be over. So what do you do when a loved one has been wrongfully injured or killed? It's simple. Just go to LetUsFightForYou.com. That's it. LetUsFightForYou.com. Helping Oregonians get justice for over 40 years. Pick it up. Let's go. Come on. Defense. Defense. What am I teaching you at home? Has this kid played before? Shoot it. Oh. Ah. Come on, ref. Open your eyes. Can't you see out there? So, which one's your kid? The referee. You can be a parent, athlete, coach, or an official. But you can only be one. Know your role. So what do you do when you can't work because you were injured on the job? Easy. Just go to LetUsFightForYou.com. That's it. LetUsFightForYou.com. Helping Oregonians get justice for over 40 years. It's game day. For a family get-together. Sherm's has the quality products and prices that will make you cheer. Sherm's Thunderbird Market, Medford's original discount grocery store. Daily adventures this summer start at Pinnacle 365. Accelerate your day with morning motivation. Freshly ground, swiftly brewed. Add some extra crunch to your lunch with our mouth-watering crispy crunchy chicken. The perfect combination of crispy juicy chicken and irresistible flavors. Earn free rewards and save at least 16 cents a gallon with our Peak Rewards app. Get supercharged and add to your fuel savings. When you purchase Core Water, Nestle Ice Cream, and Red Bull, this summer, let's meet at the peak and save on our daily adventures. You want diverse venues? We got them. Year-round sports access? You bet. Race cars, soccer, paragliding? Check, check, check. Medford has it covered as your sport ground, where the West Coast plays. Our halftime report has been brought to you by the Medford Parks and Recreation Department. Stay tuned for the... Uh, scheduled opening of Rogue X coming up in January. That is going to be a world-class facility. We're going to have the opportunity to do all kinds of activities from basketball to swimming to a whole bunch of other stuff. I think, at least as far as the swimming part goes, Joseph, I think I will. Uh, I think I will respect it by by not swimming there. <laughs> yeah, it's been you know, my, scare the children. My. Uh 
my kids are homeschooled. They uh, do a little charter school, so they're they're over at Logos, mm -hmm. and uh, had the pleasure of watching that thing from the ground up, and it is really something, and it's come together beautifully. So, you know, family packages are on on sale now. You know, go in and get your family pack, and and you can uh, schedule parties there too. Yeah, parties, birthday parties. Going to have plenty of tournaments and leagues. All the Medford uh, basketball, volleyball, et cetera, leagues, they're all going to be played there now. And All right. Well, we're just about a minute away from the start of the second half. I think we'll go ahead and take a quick break here, and we'll be back for the second half on TableRockSports.net. Glass covers the full spectrum of your glass needs and dreams. Having new windows installed by Bill's Glass dramatically update and improves the look of your home and helps reduce energy bills year-round. Let Bill's Glass show you what you've been missing. Bill's Glass, the largest glass company in Southern Oregon for your home and auto, as well as the trusted industry leader for over 50 years. Locally owned, family run, Bill's Glass in Ashland, Medford, and Grants Pass. This is Maya. As an embedded systems engineering student at Rogue Community College, Maya spends a lot of time in the lab learning circuit design and making great connections with her instructors and classmates. By riding the bus and not owning a car, Maya saves almost $1,000 a month. RVTD helps Maya get to and from class safely and easily, enabling her to invest in her bright future at Oregon Tech. Way to go, Maya! Just booted into the end zone. Get ready for the start of the second half. And the Crusaders, who took the opening kick, now kick it away. <clears throat> Davis Jones ends up kicking it, and it is taken by Christopher Freilich. Freilich cuts it to the outside, and they're wrapping it up and making the tackle for the Crusaders. Zach Cook. Is, uh, so the Crusaders, uh, the challengers now get an opportunity. It looks like we'll have freshman Grady Sickler coming in uh, and taking over at quarterback here in the second half. Also see out there for the challengers, Seth Scaglione. Also in there, Eli Young, number 23. So wholesale changes for the challengers. Sickler, the ball's loose on the turf. Fumble in the backfield. Oops. You gotta, you gotta handle the ball. A nice job by one of the Fumble linemen the there, getting Hurley. back on top of the football. That was uh, Wyatt Hurley. Wyatt Hurley. Nice job by Wyatt of uh, keeping it from being a worse disaster than it was. You know, this is one of those moments the uh, young guys are out there on the field for Cascade. You might see some of the young guys come and get some playing time for St. Mary's, but they really don't have anybody to, to bring out there. Right. That is pretty much the the young guys have been there since the beginning. Yeah. yeah. You might see one or two, maybe three guys that haven't touched the field towards the fourth quarter come out and get a couple of minutes, but really what you see is what you got. And so there, Fianaka with carry. That'll bring up a third down and eight. And he got the lost five yards back plus a couple. Sickler, freshman quarterback. That looks like Skaggs back there. Yep. And that is a bad snap. And trying to take off and run with it is... Fianaka. Fianaka, and that'll bring up fourth down. And they'll lose 14 yards. Is that a, a new, new center in there, or same, same guy snapping the ball? Probably a new center. And let's see here. It looks like Cook is, is in at the center position. Well, and now, he, for the, or now for the punt, though. Yeah. That's why he's in there. It's the first team punt team, I would think. Because you got... Uh, They're trying to count heads and make sure they got the right guys in there. You never have this problem in basketball. No, it's only five. It's a lot easier <laughs> to count. Moody going to kick it away. And 
Patton. All he can do really there is just fall on it, and the Crusaders will take over at about their 34-yard line. I'm surprised he called for the fair catch there. He had plenty of time and plenty of room to, to catch the ball and do pick up some it. yards. Yeah, try to do something. He may have had enough of the Challenger contact this evening. <laughs> Maybe. It's like, I'm not sure I really feel like getting smacked again. Uh, Patton now will be lined up wide left. Slot on his side is Flowers. Pressure coming, and they try to give to Olsen. Olsen just really no place to go. Good yeah. job by the challengers just stuffing that thing in the back. I'd like to see Olsen, especially when he gets bunched up like that, is, you know, step back and, and try to break it to the outside. He, uh, a lot of times you see him just try and get through, and there's no, no chance to get through. Looks like the challengers starting unit mostly intact although I see Bryson Walker into the ball game as a defensive back Freilich coming with pressure and the reception there made by Flowers <coughs> Flowers will take it and drop down at about the 38 yard line and that'll bring up a third down and we'll call it seven Now over to the left side. Roska. Challenger defense trying to get set here. Keen. And working that hard count. Credit to the Challengers first team this year. Haven't seen them cross that line. Oh, they came close though, didn't they? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Keen going to go ahead and air it out, looking downfield. Nice catch. And a good Flowers. catch in traffic. T.J. Flowers with the reception, and that will move the Crusaders into Challenger territory. Thirty yard play for the St. Mary's Crusaders. Biggest play of the night. Nice catch by Flowers in traffic. 30 yards and a first down for the Crusaders. The ball down at the 33. 6.09, the running clock going here in the second half. Yeah, they try to go to the ground game. Olsen really can't go much of anywhere. And in fact, maybe loses a couple of yards on the play to bring up a second down and long. You know, Olsen, he's really struggled to pick up much yardage this year and uh, last year he was a force to be reckoned with and you know it's that young line now he had a, a pretty strong line in front of him last year they created a lot of holes for, for him he broke a lot of big plays and just hasn't happened for him yet this year really well, I think the casual fan doesn't think about the line a whole lot, but I can imagine that uh, Olsen, yeah, does have a renewed appreciation for the guys he had in front fumble of him. And a fumble on the play. Recovered by the challengers. It looked like... Uh, maybe we had Van Wart there. Yep. But I also saw Luke Ryder near the ball. So Cascade will come out, and Sickler, at least initially, will be their quarterback. And we do see Scaglione. And Scaglione, is, uh, when he's in, he's almost effectively a Wildcat quarterback, really. First and ten. Sickler with, looks like Walker there in motion. Sickler getting some pressure, and he's taken down. Alex Rosales, you talked about him, Joseph, as being one of those guys that we have not seen the last of. Yeah, no, he, he does a good job breaking through the line and, and making tackles behind the line of scrimmage. And uh, only a sophomore. So going to see him for a couple more years. A lot of football left in front of him. 4.09 to go as the running clock continues. Sickler, a quarterback. 
And Walker on the fly sweep. He gets away from Smith. And he dashes up to just outside the 45-yard line. And give him 10 yards on the fly sweep. <laughs> nice job. Nice cut inside that block there. Ball on the 45, third down. So that'll spot that at a 45. It'll bring up a third down and eight. A little bit of trouble there with the snap. So Sickler does it really about all you can do is just fall on it and live to fight another day. Loses about five yards on that. And it will bring up fourth down, down and the punt team is going to come back out. Clock running still, 3.10 to go here in the third quarter. Running clock kind of doing what's intended to do. The challenger's getting set to kick it away. And, uh, trying to get everybody out there, including the punter. You yeah, that might be good. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Doesn't Although, I don't think he He's not going to punt it. He's going to cover it. Oh, he got that back there. Is that Pianaka? Or is that maybe... Somebody smaller than that, it looks like. Maybe Scaglione? I don't know. Yeah. yeah I saw this coming. Here comes the fake Scaglione, who's seen time a quarterback. Reception made by Derek Farmer. Farmer runs down the sideline, and he's pushed out of bounds. Farmer would be, in a perfect world, he'd be the number two man on the depth chart at quarterback, but you can see that cast on his hand. Yeah, a nice catch for a dude with a cast on his hand, too. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if St. Mary's didn't recognize what was going on there, but... I would not have left the two guys deep on, on that right there, especially when the guy kind of went in motion and came to the other side and kind of stepped him up in there a little bit, take away that uh, who, who, underpass. Who threw that? Yeah. I think that was Scaglione. Okay. Evan Stonehill into the ball game, and now Sickler. <laughs> Rex Smith's going to get his money's worth out uh, of that. What's the play? size difference there? 6'6", 240. And, uh, and about, uh, let me see, your Sickler at 6'150". Yeah, a little bit of size difference. Six, uh, six inches and uh, uh, 90 pounds difference. Yeah. So, Sescaglione in the ball game. It also uh, looks like we've got... For the challengers, Carson Willard in as a slot receiver. Low snap. He falls on it again. So the challengers go in the wrong direction here. Glad to see Rex still out there on the field, though, after going down with what looked like a leg injury earlier. If they want to beat Coquille next week, he's got to be a big part of it. Looks like sizing up that line for the challengers. Wyatt Hurley in there. Also in there is uh, Ben Chamberlain. Sickler going to throw. Has a man downfield. The pass is caught. Touchdown, challengers. Man, if Bradley Patton only read the receiver there and could have turned around, he could have stepped in front of that ball. Walker with the catch. So Bryson Walker from 28 yards out. Show you the replay here. Dropping back, nice throw, and a good play made on the ball by Walker. <laughs> and that's the end of the quarter. After three. I blinked. Yes. And at the end of three, it is the Challengers 60. And the Crusaders nothing. We'll be back after these messages. We're oh very curious about your new family member. Hello. We built her so we could get a family plan. Well, with U.S. Cellular, it's just $19.99 per line for one, two, or three lines. Oh. I guess we don't need a fourth line anymore. This is a... Uh... 
Awkward. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Visit U.S. Cellular at Siskiyou, Southern Oregon's exclusive authorized agent for U.S. Cellular, now serving Roseburg and Klamath Falls. See SOUSCellular.com for details. Yeah, we're back here at Gary Wheeler Field, also known as Field Number 10, out at the Lithia Driveway Complex. Tomorrow, Johnny and I are going to be in here for uh, a little bit of RCC Men's Soccer, a team that has captured the Southern Division Championship and is set to host a Final Eight game coming up on November 4th. So it's been a fantastic season for them, one that they... <laughs> So uh, looking forward to that for you soccer aficionados. Check in at 2 tomorrow, at 12 tomorrow. It's going to be, it's become a real fun team to play. Who do, who do they have tomorrow? Tobacco. Okay. I would say that's an arch rival, but you know the reality is I think every team in the league is an arch rival for them. I think those are the ones, depending on who you talk to. You talk to their coach, I think he thinks of Lane as an arch rival. I yeah. know if you talk to uh, one of the guys that played in the program, he would probably tell you Chemeketa. They were the team always chasing them. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Here, though, we got football, high school football, Challengers, senior recognition night, homecoming. And now we're in the fourth quarter. Just like that. Clock running. <clears throat> Breitler seeing some time That's along that defensive line. Scott Batson. Keen handing to Flowers. And Flowers just one of those over all, all around athletes. I know a couple of weeks ago, uh, Joseph, we you had a chance to see him take some time at quarterback. Yeah, he uh, Keen went down with a uh, arm injury. He was in a cast for a little bit of time. Luckily, not too long. Um, you know, with with the line and everybody being so young, he didn't get to do a whole lot. No, um, but. He definitely is a guy that can run the show back there. He's he's who we thought we'd probably see last year. Right. It was uh, Tyson Del Planch, who had never played the quarterback position a day in his life and did a terrific job. Keen with it. Ball tipped. Intercepted by the challengers. Flag on the play. Yeah, Kellen Clucker is going to get called for interference, I'm pretty play. sure. So this, is, this one is, uh, is coming back. So, so much for that. Penalty called against the challengers. He was there just a little bit early. And I think he knows it from his uh, body language over on the sideline. So that's going to be a 15-yard penalty against Cascade Christian. And a first down for St. Mary's. So St. Mary's catching a break here. <clears throat> And Klecker's uh, still discussing it with the Challenger coaches. And there's a big committee going on down there. Meanwhile, the clock's still running. Yeah, I thought, I thought penalty flags was uh, no. stoppage of clock. No, it isn't. No? Not, not, not with the 40-point rule. Um, Ryan Westfall. Ryan Westfall, your name is Zidron. You so are the only thing, like you mentioned earlier, scores, five, stop ten. the clock, and uh, timeouts by each team. The rest of the time it runs, so... Uh, <laughs> while they're having their uh, dinner discussion. Yes. We've got uh, the clock running. Yes. Uh, Abby's still open. <laughs> Must still be. So 15 yards on the challengers, and it'll be a first down for St. Mary's up at the 44. So the Crusaders end up getting some good field position out of this. Kemmerling there, lined up as a tight end. Patton split out wide to the right.
Keen. Handed off to Flowers. Flowers gets away from Fia Naka. And almost gets around the corner. Yeah. I'm well, surprised we didn't see some of that a little sooner. I mentioned, you know, we'll see a mix of the two two backs back there and Flowers getting a hold of the ball. He's he's a little bit different of a runner than Olsen is. Olsen's a downhill hitch a hard kind of guy and Flowers get around the outside and <coughs> use that speed. So now uh, second down and nine for the Crusaders. I'd like to see Flowers maybe on some jet sweep or something. Get the ball running with it with his feet moving. There. Trying to run it through the heart of that challenger defense. In there for He's Cascade Christian good. is Cole Breitler. Third down and eight for the Crusaders. So that'll bring up third down and eight. Fianaka coming out of the Challenger lineup as Sice returns. Trying to give some of those guys a break. Fianaka running with the football a little bit. We saw that on offense. 7.33 to go. Keen. Got the whole house coming. And uh, didn't have really the time he needed. Flowers was open. Right. Partially hoping because I think that Coach Sean, the defensive coordinator for the Challengers, threw the whole defense at him. And King took a pretty good hit there, too, as he threw the ball. You are a winner. You'll find it just waiting for you at the tent. Hopefully the man has a hot tub at home. Yes. You go home and soak and live in there for for a while. Like he is, uh, he is hung tough against the challengers well, this evening. Pretty big kid for a freshman too. Six one, one eighty five. Freshman, pretty impressive for a freshman. Yeah, Absolutely. Just, just down talking with a couple of the coaches at halftime, and <clears throat> one thing, <clears throat> sorry, they mentioned this. You know, I was saying he's gonna look pretty good down the road, and. One of them mentioned, you know, and he's got the size to, to, to get good and be a good quarterback. And he's going to get another uh, grounding penalty there as he just unloads it again with no receiver out here in the flat. And he's still between the tackles. Rex over there saying, you know you can't throw it to me. <laughs> yeah, again. <laughs> yeah. So that's going to be a grounding penalty against St. Mary's. I think we had a couple of weeks ago that uh, make him an eligible receiver. Sickler, Sickler had to uncork a ball, I think, and one of one of the challenger guys, or maybe I'm thinking of the opposition, where it was like the lineman was like, "Oh, I, look what I found!" No, no, it's something against the challengers. I did hmm. not. Hmm, must have been a. I assumed it was grounding. Must have been a late hit. I guess is what they call it. Okay. And uh, that's a 15 yarder. Yeah, must have been a personal foul against Cascade, and it's going to give uh, the Crusaders another first down. Surprised that didn't uh, end up being offsetting there. Yeah. Yeah, because it looked like grounding to me. There was no receiver in the vicinity and still in the tackle box, so. And you can see the challenger coaching staff trying to plead their case. Right now, pass complete from Keene to Patton. And Kellen Klecker right on top of it that time. He saw that movie before, and last time Patton got away from him. This time he didn't. Nice job by Klecker of tackling him for a loss of a yard. There's a big difference, too, on these screen passes from Cascade to St. Mary's. You see Patton's out there by himself. <coughs> Cascade, their man's dropping back. He's catching that pass, and he's got two or three lead blockers mm -hmm. running downfield with him. Well, that's the name of the game, and, you know, you, you do that, and you spring these fast guys loose, and it just makes trouble. Second down and 11. Keen hands to Flowers. Flowers spins out of a would-be tackle. Nice piece of running there as he crosses the 35 down to the 33. By Kellen, Klecker. Kellen Klecker in on the tackle for Cascade Christian. Defensively out there with Fianaka, Van Wart, 
Jack Nips, Derek Farmer, Christopher Fralick, Bryson Walker, Luke Wilson. Now, dropping back, throwing is Keen. Oh, no, that's not. And a pass interference call. Which, is, uh, which it's not. Which I, I don't. I, that's, un, that's, that's incredible. But, uh, you know, that was a really nice play coming over and making a hit by the challengers right as the ball got there. The only thing I can think is maybe they the called it for him not turning. Well, it doesn't matter. The ball hits the receiver at the same time you hit him. It's not <laughs> pass interference. He has to catch the football. So, um, again, not a, not a call I like to see, but at the end of the day, that's what they're going to call it, looks like. Bryson Walker, I think, would agree. Yeah. <clears throat> but 2.56 left to go in the ball game. And that's all right. The clock's just running, and it really doesn't matter at this point. So now third down. Well. <laughs> they got to come back and mark off the penalty. So the ball was incomplete, remember, so the penalty will be 15 yards from the original line of scrimmage and should be down, you know, around the 18-yard line or so. 17-yard line, it looks like. And so the Crusaders get it there. Possible scoring opportunity for them here. <clears throat> With 2.13 as the clock continues to run. There'll be Flowers behind Keene, the quarterback. And Olsen also back there. Little swing pass to Flowers. Freilich almost had him. And that's the thing about Flower, he'll make you miss. Yeah, he can make you miss. Credit to Cascade, though. They closed the door real quick there. They had, what, nine of their 11 guys on this They'll, side of the field. They fly to the ball. They collapsed in a hurry. Yeah, loss of four yards on the play. Because TJ, from his point of view, saw what I saw up here. Nice open hole there. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, he was just collapsed on by a gang of uh, and he's like, yeah, when did you get here? Players. Oh, and that <coughs> is one of the Challenger things that, the, that Cascade has on that defense is a lot of speed. And you can see it in pl on plays like that. Second down and 14. Keen, Olsen, but penetration there. And Fianaka in the backfield. Yep. Fianaka making the penetration through the line and tackling him for a couple of yards of the loss there as well. Well, I don't know that we'll see a lot of gaudy offensive statistics tonight, but I imagine between tackles for losses, turnovers, things of that nature that the, uh, the and, and the zero on the scoreboard that the uh, challengers will put up big defensive numbers tonight. Yeah, uh, you got to be careful here if you're the challengers. Look at the clock. St. Mary's probably going to head for the end zone here. Or try to, anyway. Keen taken down. Breitler coming from Give me Davis the blind Jones. side. Give me Davis Jones. Give me a 45-yarder. Why not? You, we, I don't know if you saw him out there at halftime kicking a few, but he was he, hitting them from 45. He's got a mean boot. Yeah, he, he had one that would have been good from 60-plus last week. So, this game is in the book. Dang it, I wanted a field goal. <laughs> <laughs> another day, another day. So, this game will come to a conclusion. The Cascade Christian Challengers on senior night, homecoming night, taking on their crosstown rival. They end up putting uh, 60 on the board against the Crusaders. We'll take a timeout, and when we return, invite you to stick around for the Southern Oregon Sports Commission's Know Your Role postgame show here on TableRockSports.net. Glass covers the full spectrum of your glass needs and dreams. Having new windows installed by Bill's Glass dramatically update and improves the look of your home and helps reduce energy bills year-round. 
Let Bill's Glass show you what you've been missing. Bill's Glass, the largest glass company in Southern Oregon for your home and auto, as well as the trusted industry leader for over 50 years. Locally owned, family run, Bill's Glass in Ashland, Medford, and Grants Pass. This is Maya. As an embedded systems engineering student at Rogue Community College, Maya spends a lot of time in the lab, learning circuit design and making great connections with her instructors and classmates. By riding the bus and not owning a car, Maya saves almost $1,000 a month. RVTD helps Maya get to and from class safely and easily, enabling her to invest in her bright future at Oregon Tech. Way to go, Maya! Here at Gary H. Wheeler Field, the challengers defeat the Crusaders by a score of 60 to nothing. And looking at a couple of highlights from the game, getting things started was a touchdown run by Caleb Scaglione. He makes a nice cut, strings it to the outside, and he's just a hard guy to catch. He'll punch it in. Challengers get on the board early to make it a 6-0 six, uh, six ball game. And then, challengers with more, and here, nice little uh, touchdown pass from the arm of Ashton Moody. I think once Mark has the stats, we'll see that he didn't throw the ball very much tonight, but on the other hand, he made it count every time that the uh, challengers scored. So with the score 14 to nothing, Challengers far from done scoring. This is a play where Brendan Van Wart scoops up the fumble and runs it in for a touchdown. So we had pretty much kind of everybody getting into the act this evening as the Challengers make it 20 to nothing. Challengers, once again, they're going to go ahead and do a handoff on the fly sweep play. Breaks it to the outside. And the challengers score some more. We're still in the first quarter. And the challengers in tight. And scored in any number of different ways here. That touchdown ends up making it a 35 to nothing ball game. And then for Cascade Christian, a uh, pick six. I think probably gone this far with highlights. Go ahead and throw in a couple of more here. This time, Moody, he'll take matters into his own hands and puts his good wheels to work as the challengers score. And that was the play that where we just got in at the very end with the uh, late whistle. <laughs> we have more of the celebration than we actually do the Actual touchdown. Play. Yeah. And then... The cherry on top, the touchdown pass late in the ball game. Sickler getting some action, fires it to Bryson Walker. He scores, and the PAT no good to make it a 60-0 ball game. And, Mark, I think you've got some stats for us. Yeah, not much difference from the first half, really. I mean, both teams didn't run a whole lot of plays in the second half with the running clock and the uh, multiple referee discussions <laughs> that happened during the second half. Uh, St. Murray's ends up the game. Uh, they got a few more first downs in that second half, and uh, so they end up the game with uh, eight first downs. Um, they rushed the ball 18 times for a minus 23 yards, a lot of that coming on quarterback sacks. Uh, passing... Uh, uh, for the for uh, St. Mary's, uh, Keen uh, was uh, ended up 12 for 30 for um, 86 yards on the night. So running and passing St. Mary's with 63 yards of total offense. He did have the one interception as well. Return yards for 
St. Mary's 95, so total offense for the Crusaders, 158 yards. They had two penalties for 15 yards. Um, and the safety, obviously, also against them tonight. Um, but, you know, the, the defense for Cascade Christian was phenomenal again, just as we've seen them all season. For the Challengers, they end the game 10 first downs, r- running the ball 22 carries for 109 yards. Um, between Sickler and Moody, they were 7 for 7 for 209 yards passing. <laughs> no, no incompletions tonight, which was kind of interesting. Uh, return yards for the Challengers. Remember, they had a couple of punt return touchdowns, um, uh, you know, and, and uh, interception return, some other returns, 180 yards of returns for the Challengers, 498 yards of total offense for Cascade Christian. They did have one kind of bugaboo that I know Coach Getman's going to be on them about, five penalties for 70 yards tonight for the Challengers. Of those penalties, um, six of them were... Uh, 15 yarders, a few pass interferences, one personal foul penalty. I know that Coach Getman hates to see uh, those kind of things, so that's something that they'll have to clean up before next week's game against South Umpa. But overall, just a dominant performance for the Challengers. All right. Well, that'll wrap things up. Our postgame show brought to you by the Southern Oregon Sports Commission's Know Your Role campaign. Visit TravelMedford.org and search Know Your Role to see how this campaign is changing the culture of youth sports for the better. Joseph Brett, I know ordinarily St. Mary's is your call. And and tonight, uh, with the unique kind of situation, next year it'll be be your call but we thank you for joining tonight just kind of give us a little uh, perspective on that crusader program and uh better days ahead and good luck to the crusaders next week yeah um you know cascade's pretty much done this to everybody this year so not too much of a knock on st mary's no you know nobody's really done a whole lot against the uh uh challengers but <clears throat> You know, a lot of things that they're just learning each and every week. These guys are um, getting beat down some of these weeks, but they're getting to go back, watch film, break down what's happening, and, you know, in the coming years they're going to be imp- improving each and every game, you know. Uh, even even losing 60 to nothing tonight, I saw a lot of things from these guys that I wasn't seeing two or three weeks ago um, in some of the games where they they – looked really beat down uh, we, we lost pretty bad to uh, South Umqua um, 76-7 or something like that mm-hmm. and these kids looked defeated and they looked just beat down and you didn't see that really from them tonight no, you no. saw heart you saw uh, passion they, they played till the last whistle um, so just good on them and you know they're young so give them a year or two and, and see where they're at kind of like their program was you know last year they had a pretty decent team and the year before they got rid of a bunch of seniors mm-hmm. and they're uh you know aldrich at running back and a few of those guys that really carried their program you know i see them a couple of years down the road in the same position fighting yeah. fighting in the first second round of the playoffs and you know jamie young credit to him yeah he's absolutely. got a young team and he, he he's got them four wins Yep. He's got four wins with half your team being freshmen. So credit to the coaching staff. They're going to do great things with this team over the next couple of years. Absolutely. Well, we thank you for watching today's broadcast. I'd like to thank the Grace Cascade Christian High School Athletic Director, Nate Maven, for hosting the Lithia Superstore Game of the Night on TableRockSports.net and today's broadcast. Special thanks to Crusaders coach Jamie Young and Challengers coach John Getman. Our next Table Rock Sports production featuring Challengers football will be next Friday night, big game against South Umpqua, the regular season finale. Again, the final score on the John L. Scott scoreboards, uh, Cascade Christian 60, St. Mary's nothing. This has been a special presentation at Table Rock Sports. Our executive producer is Joe Brett with Joseph Brett and Mark McLemore, Johnny McCoy on the camera. I'm Jim McCoy saying thanks for watching and good night from Gary H. Wheeler Field in Medford. Have a good night, everybody. That's a lot of-